Uh, are we live? Uh, are we live? Seems good. Alright, let's continue with some... Where's that sound still coming from? Okay, there we go. Hey, Vel, why does it keep turning the preview video back on? Oh, okay. Alright, I think we're good. Hey, Veldak, fat boy, good to see you again. Not... Uh, wait, what? Okay, this is really weird. It keeps... It keeps unpausing the little preview video in OBS. Wait, I'm gonna leave it like Wait. this. Leave it like Wait. this. This what? As soon as I click away from it, it starts again. Why are you like this? Move to grid. Pause. Okay. That's a bit more squished than I would like, but we'll live with that for now. Veldak, fat boy not so slim, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. I am here live. Today, Zonday meme intensifies? Zonday, Tay Zonday. I have not seen that one. Okay. Uh, so, time to get our bearings again. Um, I haven't forgotten that we're basically just waiting on more Naquitite, uh, to get our research done. We had a big bottleneck where we finally slammed into a wall of not having enough antimatter stream. Uh, and it was actually not for lack of input resources, except for supercooled thermofluid. Um, I decided to take this opportunity to redo our thermofluid blocks. In fact, we can probably go ahead and delete those now. I'm just not going to worry that much about some cold thermofluid, perhaps. We've got... Oh, that's cool thermofluid. Oh, it's just because that train is in the way. Okay. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, we made these new thermofluid blocks that use the cryonite slush. And I looked at the recipe and said, oh, one cryonite slush per operation? That's not much. We don't need to, I mean, implicitly, we don't need to worry very much about that. Turns out we do. Um, so we bottlenecked on cryonite slush for a while. Um... We're catching up with that, I believe. Made a block uh, over here. The cryonite slush. Oh, it's actually saturated now. Oh, fantastic. And that's two stations for pickup for cryonite slush. Um, I think that means we've got... Where is it? Something's wrong here. If cryonite slush less than 10, there's a hundred and... S 139 in this block still, and it's basically empty. Um, I think there's a... I think I made a second uh, cryonite slush tanker. And it is probably, yeah, it's waiting its turn to land here. So I can either have this ship take off sooner. Um, oh, we need to finish building this as well. Um, I can either have these ships take off sooner when they're being emptied, which would be just a little bit more wasteful of liquid rocket fuel. Um... But we've actually, this was actually like, I think the last fluid that we're ever going to be bringing up. And we've got two slots available here. So I think what we'll do instead. Is just make this one a cryonite slush drop off as well. 
And we could even add more ships if we want to, but I suspect that is super overkill. Uh, this one was accidentally made to be petroleum, but that's fine. Uh, not going to bother changing the station settings. Uh, yeah, that's actually everything. Isn't it that chocolate rain guy? I don't know. It was a revamp meme? His Twitch reverbed and he rolled with it, killing chat's ears for like half an hour. Oh no. Oh no. Alright. So now both of our... The only bottleneck for our two... Uh, Cryonite slush shuttles is um, how aggressively we want this to be filled up before the ship launches. Um, but yeah, it does seem like we are catching up, or we have already caught up with saturating Cryonite slush. We just need the trains to move this stuff now. Uh, what do we got? Um, six, seven, eight train loads, uh, well, just under eight train loads of Crynite Slush in each tanker. Um, where are our spiders? Here they come. Okay, so that is probably resolved. Uh, which means we will be getting, uh, Cryonite. I mean, well, yeah, Cryonite was ultimately the bottleneck there, but more to the point. Antimatter stream is going to flow into these ships. They're going to take off again. We're going to get Naquitite. We're going to get Naquium Plate. We're going to get Science. Do you have enough fluid trains in orbit to survive this new load? Yeah, 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 definitely. Because uh, part of the reason for that is it literally just has to go from here to here or here to here. Like, th this is the entirety of it. Most of the trip is just coming down from a depot, which is... I mean, we could even put a depot right here if necessary. Um, but each of these blocks consumes, at maximum, 580 crinite slush per second. Uh, so that is a bit under three minutes per train load. Uh, we've got room for four train loads of crinite slush at each drop-off. We can summon... Only one train at a time. Hmm. That's probably fine, to be honest. That'd be a good spot for a depot if needed. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Did we get... Oh. Probably shouldn't walk over the spaceships. It's a little late, but this thing's not about to leave. Do we really not have the... Here we go. Uh, and, and one more? How do we not have one more booster tank here? Do I have one? I don't think so. Uh, could I pick one up real quick? Where's my spider? There should be a bot moving towards me. No? Oh, that's why. Alright. 
let's just go down there ourselves in the speediest of spiders and we'll get that sorted out um i could have sworn these spiders i maybe i just forgot i was gonna say maybe i forgot to set them up to request spaceship things when i redesigned their requests but the fact that they had a they, the fact that they had some uh spaceship rocket booster tanks i find really weird i would expect either zero or way more than enough that's kind of strange all right let's send them back up to the mall the second group following the first group had them on board I didn't- they don't have different settings, it's just going by the colours of each of these. Um, here it is. Spaceship Rocket Booster Tank Zero, that's on the purple ones. And Zero on the blue ones, which begs the question of how they had any at all. That's... really bizarre. <laughs> Alright, let's just head over here. I see Naquitite in motion. I see one, two, three of our four blocks have gotten started. No smelting just yet. Uh, it remains to be seen just how quickly we can refuel the many uh, ships waiting uh, waiting their turn to land in Nalvis orbit. Uh, each of them has, let's see, about 17k times 8. A hundred and thirty-six thousand antimatter stream per trip. Most of it probably from taking off from Nalvis. Um, so we actually need more than one train load delivered here uh, to launch each ship. 1.36 train loads to be precise. Um... But we are making antimatter stream quite reliably right now, I think. What's this one blocked on? Thermo fluid output. Uh, they're all connected, right? Yeah. Huh. I didn't see that coming. This isn't even close to full yet. 25 degree thermofluid goes here, goes here, goes here, goes here, goes here, goes here, goes here. Hmm. I guess we could benefit from some pumps. Uh, took a while to learn that that was a problem. Uh, but yeah, antimatter stream generally. Oh yeah, we've been <laughs> we've been producing it all right. Hey, El Pancho, Daniel, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Playing my map and suddenly realized Chocolate Rain song is playing in my head. Indeed. There's no choice now but to go look it up and listen to it. Alright, so... This flicker of fluids kind of shows us that these are working, even if... Oh, it's actually really empty. Hmm. 
Well, as long as we catch up, it's fine. I should probably just look at the supercooled thermofluid. The fact that four of these look like they've got at least a couple of train loads each uh, is a very good sign to say the least. And we've got the thermofluid at the drop-offs for antimatter stream as well. Um, how much are we requesting here? Oh, perfect. Okay. So, what should we do now? Where are you going with that? That makes sense, actually. We should probably arrange... Oh yeah, this is low priority, I forgot. No, I'm not changing that. That makes that, that actually makes perfect sense. So it's thermofluid and antimatter stream. Uh, I don't think we're having any trouble with the canisters at this point. Where are we making them? Here they are. Yeah, canisters are totally saturated. So it's just the fluids which we're catching up on, and I do want to keep this as a low priority. At least until we finish getting antimatter stream to all of our ships. Uh, I did fully automate this. It's going to take off... Uh, there's a timer to make sure we get 10,000 degrees stored in the energy beam receiver. Uh, but also, this thing has to be empty of interstellar travel data before this thing will bother to launch. Or maybe I set it to be less than some number. No, it has to be empty. So I don't have to remember to launch this anymore. Um, there's probably... Oh, let's go deliver some more supercomputers. Uh, we don't have any. I mean, they are very expensive. Also, with the stack size of one for Naquim processors, I guess there's absolutely no reason for this to be a stack inserter. Uh, I mean, technically, it'll it'll insert it'll insert neural supercomputers faster than it will insert Naquium processors. Um, but yeah. Um, one short. That's fine. Let's go and... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think this is. We're almost ready to finish our block of the ultimate uh, junk data card recycling system. Oh, there's actually no junk data cards here. That state of affairs may not continue, though. If we start ramping things up later. I kind of would like to finish this. It almost just for its own sake. Um, I'm not sure what to do with these crinite rods, though. Um... Do we have another crinite rod drop-off somewhere? Maybe we could just send it there and hope that there's room? That'll work. Okay. Uh, so that is one, two, three, four supercomputers left to go before this blocks. Dunsky forever. What are you doing? You're looking for cold thermofluid. And 
and it is being pumped in. Why so slow? Uh, I realized the uh, double pumps on each side is not actually helping because only pumps on one side will connect at a time. But I think... Yeah, I think ironically it's act this setup is actually slowed down pumping fluid into the train. Assuming that the train comes when there's about one train load of uh, fluid available. Or less than two. Um, let's say that only this side has the pumps activated for this cargo, uh, this fluid wagon. It means the fluid in here is going to have to go around like this. I wonder if there's a way a burgers and fries. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for the raid. How's your stream today? Um, I wonder if... I, I might just head over there again. Was it here that I was messing with it? Down here. I wonder if I could... Set it up so that we get three pumps pumping it in. Um, probably. In fact, very likely. Just need to add a couple of undergrounds or something. It looks a little strange, but it's probably fine. It's funny, I hit raid, then went back to talking and problem solving and completely forgot I had raided. You have a nice rest of the stream, though. I do need to get some sleep. Alright, take care, burgers. Have a good one. Thanks for dropping by. Thanks for the raid. Okay. Um, I guess... The middle ones can be... The pumps that we keep. Yeah, that was surprisingly easy. I like that. Um, why don't we patch it for these other ones as well? Can't really do a copy paste. see. Oh, this is already a drop-off, so... That can go... Wait, there's still fluid in there. 5.1 cryonite slush? Whatever, it'll get pushed into this container. 18 UPS, you're crazy, my dude. We're, we're at 20. 21 even. It's It's fine. This is fine. Uh, wait, I might just copy-paste this in case I want to refer to it. Alright, that one is done. And then these two to the middle. Anyway, we're almost done. We're, we're kind of almost done with this playthrough. Next time we'll be a bit more UPS conscious from the beginning. And over here. One. Uh, this way. One, two, three, and four. Uh, I guess I need to do it up here as... Oh my goodness. Oh, this is actually a lot. 
a lot to patch. I could just ignore it. Or I could do this part off stream. Hmm. Like it's it's just gonna make some of the trains when they come to pick up fluid sometimes take longer. It's definitely not gonna make them take long to, uh, longer to unload though. In fact, I can probably just get rid of these. I get motion sickness, I can't play at less than 45. Uh, hmm. That's interesting. I mean, it varies for, from person to person, uh, depending on the game. Depending on things like field of view settings, uh, whether it's a third or first person camera, uh, all sorts of stuff like that. There was, uh, for a while, a rather... I mean, I guess it's not completely dead, probably, but it used to be worse, I think. Uh, a lot of first-person shooters made primarily for consoles, which had the field of view squeezed down to, like, 60. Uh, partly because you don't have to render as much. And partly because if you're playing on a console, you're probably sitting further away from the screen. Uh, play that on a PC, and you may experience some discomfort. Let's fix these, at least. I think the cold thermofluid is the one where we're going to consistently have a train coming for pickup when there's not that much fluid. Fucked up shooters for the PC for like a decade? Absolutely. Dark Rail? Good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Oh, I need to do a little more than this to fix this thing. Yeah, and it made them a lot slower as well. Went from people being able... Uh, you, you went from having movement tech where people could basically zoom around... Um, zoom around the map and maintain high speed. To just... Really, really, really slow gameplay. Lurking from work. Uh, have a nice lurk. Thanks for hanging out. Let's get rid of these ones. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And one, two, three. I think that's three of these that we've patched. One, two, three, and four. Nope, that's all of them. Alright, there is more to be done to update all of those, but it's not particularly urgent. I might do that off stream. Okay. Um, so what else are we doing? We've got the Foenestra project to occupy us while we wait for the Naquium to flow in. We've already got our antimatter reactors and such in this construction ship waiting to go. And there's our Naquium plate. Oh, we've actually, we're just running out of it now after another delivery. But more to the point, it is flowing. 
And we've got a steady supply of ships heading back to Stardust for more Naquim now. Okay. Uh, apart from setting up Foenestra, trying to figure out dimensional anchors, and collecting collecting modules from mysterious structures that we haven't been to yet, uh, and trying to figure out that mystery as well. Um, we might sort of be running out of things to do after only 700,000 hours. Alright, let's go to Foenestra then. Maybe I should bring my personal ship as well. Nah, it's fine. This thing's pretty fast anyway, and Foenestra is not very far away. Alright. Um, that is a lot of... Iridite core fragments. Oh, it's being redistributed. I see. That's fine. Alright, so what's our ETA? Six minutes? Boanestra is further away than I remember. We're still accelerating, though. But yeah, it's going to be like at least five minutes game time. So like 15 minutes real time. Uh, I could redesign... Well, not redesign. I've actually got the design ready to go, pretty much. I don't have the whole thing blueprinted, but I understand it well enough to just do it again. Uh, I do have Veldax solution. Was it down here? No. Uh, I do have Veldax solution to uh, the Arcospheres somewhere. Here it is, I think. Nope, those are all mine. Where did I put it? Hmm. I could redo it from scratch. I, I do actually remember it well enough that I'm confident that I can do this. By the way, I posted screenshots and some thoughts into selfies. Uh, cool, cool. Oh yeah, I saw some of that. With the 64 of each type of, uh, uh, glyph, right? What are we doing at Foenestra? Um, just trying to set up the power plant for now. And then we'll see what else we can do at it. Um, do these spiders have a cargo pad handy? It would appear they do not. Okay. Uh, so the purple ones carry the big things. Uh, space... Logistics Atron, Space Production Atron. That's this is this one. I should probably actually give it the name as well. Okay. Um So wait, where am I going? I have to be on the same surface as the player character for this. Space production a tron. Uh, cargo landing pad. 
exactly one. Don't apply changes, that just applies it to the player character. Save. Reset, so we're back to our player thingy. And... Space Production Atron. It doesn't actually save the names. Okay, but that is... Our new whiteout for the purple spiders. Some of them are missing equipment. Oh. Some of them have different amounts of um, legs in here. Huh. Well then. I'll have to give that some attention a bit later. Hey Mikey, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Rubber Band Rambo, good to see you again also. Welcome, welcome. You dropped by the Terraria stream, right? I remember having to spell out that long name. Oh, pardon me. Just had to bundle up a bit there. It's getting cold. Uh, Zetius, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Redeemed one for Factorio as well. Oh. Uh, as in, we already did it? Or did I miss it? There's so many names now. Uh, I double redeemed. Oh, okay. Sure, let's go. I'm not even going to double check it. It's fine. Um, we got an R, U, I think I had a U somewhere. Double B. Do we have a D somewhere? More than likely. A M M B O Okay. Um remove this over here. This over here. Double check the bots can reach. They should be able to. I'm absolutely loving the um, radar construction pylon having a, a little charging port. Much easier than Terraria? <laughs> yes, indeed. Where is the engineer right now? I've only ever seen you do everything from satellite view. I'm currently riding this construction ship to Foenestra. Who am I, Eric? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Looks like we are not having trouble catching up. Um, 
Naquium ingot production is looking very solid now. Fantastic. Alright, uh, so what else were we doing? Oh yeah, I wanted the construction spiders to have cargo landing pads. Not that we'll be using them a whole lot from this point on. But we need one giant container for our arcospheres. We are going to have to stop what's happening here for a little while, but it's all going to bottleneck on Naquium. Well, I suppose for a little while it might not bat bottleneck on Naquium at all, um, because we've got like all of our ships from Stardust landing one after the other as quickly as they can be refueled. What's your current project? We are going to Foenestra. Uh, and we are making a power plant. Um, we did try... I mean, I could use this as a backup. Um, we did try making a power plant that's going to use beamed power. But the amount of energy that actually gets there is minimal, to say the least. Whoops. Um, I think this thing, this thing's pointed at Nalvis Orbit. That's fine, I guess. Hagen, how much power do we have to spare? Uh, quite a lot since we picked up the uh, anchor. But yeah, just to demonstrate. Uh, if we point this thing at Foenestra. Uh, we get a whopping 0.34% transmission efficiency. Uh, so not a whole lot. We would need... A frankly ridiculous amount of solar panels um, to support Foenestra with this because uh, Foenestra, this thing right here, it's asking for 10 gigawatts of power. So we would need, um, let's see, 1 over 0. Point, was it 0. 0.034? Um, oh, this is, you can't see this calculator, this calculator, uh, 1 over 0 0.034, 29.41 times 10 gigawatts is 294 gigawatts. Is that right? No, I think it's, I think it's like 10, I think we're off by a digit or two. We calculated it before and it was some ludicrous number, like, um, thousand, like two, th two or three thousand gigawatts or something. That we would have to beam. Oh my, that wasn't megawatts, was it? Nope. Um, so yeah, it is, we could maybe keep this as just a backup, but it's going to take a very long time to warm up. One point two one gigawatts? Uh, no, this thing requires 10 gigawatts. Just, just casually. These, um... High temp turbine generators can do a gigawatt each, not counting the condenser turbines that we need to support them because they also output 500 degree steam. 
Um, it consumes 5,000 degree steam to do that at a rate of 1,024 per second. Um, and these high temp heat exchangers give us 562 of that per second. It's a lot of energy. Buy some U-235 from the Iranians in the car park. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's a quote, right. That'll power it up, yeah. I'm at, I've said this before, but I'm actually really disappointed at the antimatter canister's energy density. Um, 20 gigajoules? It stacks to 50, same as the uranium fuel cells. Uh, but the uranium fuel cell is actually 8 gigajoules. And this stuff's basically free compared to antimatter canisters, which are two and a half times as energy dense. Of course, these won't get you to 5,000 degrees steam. So the energy, uh, the, the density of the reactor is much, much higher. Um, but the fuel itself is only two and a half times as energy dense. Alright, our spiders should be... Wait, what? Oh, I pressed Control shift again. It's a very awkward thing to do deliberately, but occasionally I can press it by accident. Alright, let's go Control shift 3 There we go. All right. Uh, I'm not sure I want to find out the hard way what happens if I get rid of one of these machines while they are running their recipes. Considering how rare and precious Arcospheres are. Uh, let's just remove all of the requester chests from here. And we'll wait until the spinning stops. That's going to be one more recipe from this thing. I don't know... Yeah, it is under a beacon. Alright, well, we can pick up these ones already. Might not be the best idea to deconstruct the storage chests just yet. Any tips for someone seriously considering starting a space exploration playthrough? Uh, personally, I would... Um, I would make things as easy as possible on you for Nalvis. Um, it's the settings that you change on Nalvis are not going to affect other planets. Um, and it's just going to make the start of the game, which was very, very slow, um, that much faster. Uh... Besides that... Oh, um, I don't know whether this would have changed. But if I had known... Th this is kind of a big one, actually. Uh, if I had known that Space Rail was only 50 of the Tier 1 Energy Science Packs, uh, I would have gone straight for it. Like, just throw something together, even, just, even, even if I have to supply it by hand. Uh, this would have been... This would have been worth. Uh, then I could have... I mean, especially... I have my personal preference for rail blocks, but I think they're particularly good for space exploration recipes, which have all of these side outputs that you need to get rid of. Is this your first playthrough of space exploration? Yes. That's good advice. Thank you. No worries. Whoops. I hope that bump on the microphone stand wasn't audible. Alright, we're good here. Let's get rid of all of it except for the storage chests. 
we heard nothing right, guys? Uh-oh. And we're going to put in a cargo landing pad. We're going to bring all of our... Well, actually, first of all, I'll lay this out. Um, so at the top and bottom, we're going to have three of these. Unfortunately, we can only fit two on the sides as well, but that is just enough. Uh, interestingly, with Veldax design, um, we didn't end up needing any of these aggregate recipes that turn two Arcosphere Lambdas into two Arcosphere Phi's, for example. Um, it just sort of works it out itself. Uh, I think I did have... Nope, I have no idea where I kept that blueprint. Dynamic? Yeah, no, that's my one, which we can improve on. Since you are close to the end of Factorio SE and Terraria, any plans for what comes after? Uh, yeah, I already started on a master playthrough for Terraria where I'm not going to use arenas. I haven't decided on whether I'll allow myself just, like, heart lanterns and stuff, but I'm not, like, you know, making giant platforms and stuff uh, for the arenas. But I've already like, cleared a few of the less remarkable, um, you know, pre-hard mode bosses. Um, as for Factorio, I would definitely like to do another playthrough of Space Exploration. I won't go all in on it immediately after this. We're definitely taking a bit of a break. Um, maybe... I am leaning towards uh, K2 plus SE. Um, but I also want to play Oxygen Not Included. Um, this should probably... I don't know, should this be... Well, let's get... let's just get all of our Arcospheres in here first. Sphere Lambda, and so on. Yeah, um, so I'm thinking maybe the schedule will be... At least a couple of days of Oxygen not included, at least a couple of days of Space Exploration plus K2. Maybe I'll do, like, some short playthroughs of something different with Factorio before I jump back into that. Um... And I want to do a bit more variety as well. Maybe I could split it like two days of three different things. You might like 248k mod? What's that? Explain this game to me in detail? Uh, which one? Blueprints are in Discord? Yeah, I want to see if I can reinvent it uh, from memory. I think I can. Uh, Veldak. Let's grab our perfectly measured power pole. Let's... Ah, uh, whatever. Disconnect that. I'm not going to need these anyway. Alright. So we're going to put all of our Arcospheres in here. We are going to get the average. Um, I might calculate it down here just so the wires look less crazy. So it's there's uh, eight different types of arcosphere. So we're going to do each divided by eight. Output A for average. Um, 
and I if I do it like this actually I might be able to save a combinator so we're going to output both to the input to this and on the green wire we're going to output here which is also going to have the average on it actually no that's still going to cause the same problem as if I made this like a memory cell because it's going to use A as an input. However, I think I remember back when I was designing uh, Omni Smelters. Uh, let's say we have four different resources. Oh, I guess I could just use one combinator. Um, let's say we have iron plate, copper plate, steel plate, and stone brick. And to save a combinator, we want this linked um, to its own output. Each divided by 4 output A for average is not going to be 100 because... Oh my goodness. Huh. That's not what I was expecting. Oh, each times four? Whoops. Output A for average is 133. But if we actually go divided by five, because there's now five signals because of the A, we do still get the right average, I think. So if we make... Uh, if we bump this up and drop this down, the average should still be 100. Uh, I think this is right. All right, let's let's see if we can check. Average is eight. Each divided by nine output average. It says five. Oh, because the numbers are low enough. Because we don't get decimals. Um, the average uh, like. Arcosphere Omega divided by 9, for example, is 0, remainder 5. But we just changed it from 8 to 9. I would think there was no difference. Average 8. Oh, it's the ones that are... No? No? The ones that are above 20. Uh, can fit two eights or two nines. Why did that... That's weird. One, two, three. Also, we've only got seven types of Arcosphere in here right now. Alright, uh, let's just stop messing around. Um, we'll do... We'll do a times one down here. Just to keep those separate. Uh, each over eight, output A for average. So now we've got the total count plus the average on this green wire. Is having a good understanding of the logistics system necessary for SE? Uh, do you mean, like, the robot logistic system, specifically? It puts output back to its input, just sum them first and then divide. Oh yeah, we had to do that before. Yeah, definitely. Okay, um... Each times one. Output... Total arcospheres... And then uh, total arcospheres over eight. Yeah, I completely forgot that I did that before. Or I guess this is going to be specific anyway. We may as well make it a bit more clear what's happening. So A for average. Uh, and. 
I'm skeptical as to whether we need this combinator. Yeah, we're back to the problem we had before. If I actually link this here, it's going to be a bit hard to read like that. Or I could put this here, get rid of that. And this can connect down here. And if we go divided by 9, we should get the actual average. So that is 17. Uh, 15. Never mind. Alright, fine, we'll add a stupid combinator. Or we could do A times negative 1 into here and still do the same thing. Either way works. H times 1. Uh, they don't... It, it's not going to matter if they are, like incorrect for one tick. They don't need to reach here at the same time. Alright, so we have an average of 16. We still only have seven types here. Is lambda or phi... No, it's not. Actually, I'll leave that where it is. I think you don't need it, but it's going to make it a lot easier. Oh, definitely. Alright, so... We need... Uh, each... To the power of 2. Output each. And then we need... A decider combinator... That says... If this type is um, less than or equal to uh, if this if this type, let's say arcosphere lambda is less than or equal to everything. There's no everything here. Less than or equal to each. Oh. So the, the wild card's can only go here. Okay, if everything greater than or equal to Arcosphere Lambda. So the Arcosphere Lambda signal has to be at or equal to the minimum out of all of these signals. Um, then output whatever. So we're going to input our... That's weird. Each times one output each. Oh, right, I see. You can see the inputs here. We've got the average. That's definitely not correct. Uh, output. Oh, that's at each. Wait, what? Each times one output total arcospheres. Total arcospheres is 163. That looks about right. Divided by... Oh, divided by 8. Uh, is our average... Uh, 20 would be about right. So... We've got all of the arcospheres and the average. Oh, I'm looking at the output signals. Derp. All right, 51, 45, and so on. Average 20. Yeah, no, that's fine. All right, so the reason we're doing to the power of 2 here um, is... Wait, we need another step before we do this. Um, we're going to get some signals that give us, like... What, do we have anything on the average? No. We've got theta is 28. Our average is 20, so we want a signal of 8 theta. And, like, negative 15 omega to represent that they're plus 8 or minus 15 from the average. Uh, we want an absolute value that says the further away from that average, the worse things are. So the more desirable it would be uh, to run a recipe that gives us 
a different result. Or rather, we're going to look at the result of running that recipe uh, and compare the result. Um, so to the power of 2 gives us that absolute value, and it also means that the further away from the average it is, it's more heavily weighted. So it's like more urgent. Um, so, to get this, uh, theta would be 10. Uh, I guess it's just each type of arcosphere. It's the average minus each type of arcosphere. All right. So, if we do A minus each, um, I guess for signal A, it's going to cancel itself out and we don't have to worry about it, right? A minus each, output each. That's not quite right. Is it each minus A? each. Average is 22. Uh, it looks like vaguely the right sort of values that we want, but not what I was looking for. Theta minus average is 8. Theta is at plus 8. Omega minus average is negative 16. Uh, 22 minus 6. Oh yeah, no, that is 16. What am I thinking? 22 minus 13, uh, 19 is 3. Uh, yeah, no, that's right. Each minus A is better to keep logic with signs, yep. Some bots at the spiders having problems with arcospheres. Uh, it's probably because the trash... Huh? Oh, is it a different spider? No? Oh, do we not have logistic bots here anymore? We do. What? So what's happening? We've got the storage for the arcospheres. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is full. That's why. But... I forgot to go trash unrequested items on the purple spiders. All right. Okay. So we've got we've got our zero average expression of how many of each type of arcosphere we've got. We get a constant combinator. Uh, we're going to have, like, a null recipe here, and then we're going to have, um, the first recipe is lambda omega becomes c theta. Uh, we're going to call that recipe one. I'm just going to, just going to mark this up here. Okay, so lambda is going to be negative 1. In fact, let me just lambda c theta theta uh, epsilon nine, gamma omega just going to copy those across, and then we're just going to go negative 1 for our two inputs, lambda and omega, and our outputs were c and theta.
All right, so this is going to what this is this is what is going to happen to our count of alcospheres if we run this recipe, and we're going to combine this input with this one. Uh, let me just connect these while I'm at it. And we're going to do that power of two thing. Um, I feel like we don't want each. We want... How about signal one? So that's going to represent how undesirable it would be to run this recipe. So we're getting a very high value for that. 4.1k. Uh... Lambda and Omega, we would be down Omega. Omega's pretty low, so that's probably not great. Uh, Lambda would be closer to the average, so that's positive. I mean, that's better. Um, C is already above average. And Theta is already above average. So, yeah, that does sound like does sound like we wouldn't want to run this recipe. Um, do I just output probably one for these? All right. So we're just gonna copy those across. Change the numbers as we go. Signal zero, signal zero, signal zero. So this one's going to be, what if we just didn't do anything? Uh, and currently that ha that also has a value of almost the same. It's probably not exactly the same. 4.1k. Uh, that The next recipe... So that 4.1k means it's actually really undesirable um, to run that recipe. We're going to go for the second recipe up here. Oh, wait, no. I think we want the inversion for the symmetry of it. Polarize it. Oh, yeah, no, we're not doing that here. Inversion can go here. here. We'll put recipe number two up here. And that's going to be C Gamma. Uh, C and Gamma. Wait, what? There we go. C Gamma. becomes Zeta and Lambda. Where am I going? Uh, here. Uh, in fact, maybe I will remove this clutter right here. Xe Gamma becomes, what was it? Beta and... No. Zeta and Lambda. Lambda. Maybe it would be easier to read if I put like the negatives up here and the positives down here. Yeah, l let's do that. I, I think this is bit confusing. C. Theta. And out of the Omega. Uh, lambda goes here. Zeta goes here. C. And Gamma. C, Gamma, Lambda, Zeta. 
Okay, cool. Uh, so that one is also 4.1k. Hmm. I feel like I might be missing something here. Good catch. Those combinator should output recipe identifier. Don't forget to give identifier to the null recipe as well. Do you mean the zero? Will we get a light counter display? Yes. Okay, so... Uh, let's see. Would we want to run this recipe? We go down one, Xi and Gamma. Xi would be good. Gamma would be very bad. Um, and we gain one Zeta and Lambda. Zeta would be good. Lambda would be very bad. Okay. Um, I'm suspicious that all of these are approximately 4.1k. I might have done something wrong here. But uh, if we input another one of these and find that it's like a desirable recipe. What recipe would we want to run? Let's see. Um, and you know what? I think I want to go like clockwise-ish or something here. Let's go with this. All right, so that's recipe one, two, uh, three is C Zeta. Oh, I have a feeling. Hmm. Well, this is not doing anything useful anymore. Uh, let's see. Recipe number three. C Zeta Theta Phi C Zeta and was it Theta Phi? C Zeta Theta Phi. Okay. And we put that in and we get 4K. Uh, so this is still pretty undesirable, but it's more desirable than these other recipes. It does appear to be working, question mark. Uh, let's do recipe number four. Also, this needs to change. Actually, I guess output signals is only three. Oh, do these all have to be linked so we can compare them? If everything is greater than our... Yes. Okay, so so far, um, output signal 3 is winning. This is our most desirable recipe out of the ones we've compared. Alright, recipe number 4. Lambda Theta becomes Epsilon Zeta. That looks like it's going to be our most desirable recipe by far. Um, out of what we've done so far. Okay. Uh, Xi Zeta. Wait, no, that's number three. Lambda Theta. Lambda Theta. Wait, did I... I think I put this thing in backwards earlier. Yeah, I did. So it's C Zeta becomes Theta Phi. Yes. Okay, so number three is actually worse than these two. All right, Lambda Theta becomes Epsilon Zeta. Zeta. And that is at like 4.2k. Alright. This is recipe 
four. Although that's weird, I was sure this recipe would be more desirable than the others. Lambda, theta are both above average. And zeta, epsilon are both below average. And that's the first one that this is true for. Lambda omega... Oh, oh I, I did it backwards again. <laughs> Alright. Negative one. No, negative, negative one. Alright, so 3.9k. This is our most desirable recipe so far. Alright, cool. Uh, let's just do this bit ahead of time. Seven. And eight. I think we're going to need two more of these. Or one more of these. Uh, eight. And eight. Alright, so recipe number five. is going to be theta epsilon as inputs. Actually, let's start with the outputs. I can just click those. Uh, phi omega. And that way I'm not going to make this mistake again. And our inputs are theta epsilon. Epsilon... Uh, that is, yeah, unsurprisingly not very desirable, because Epsilon is below average. Uh, let's do recipe 6 down here. Outputs are Gamma Epsilon. Gamma Epsilon. Zeta Phi are our inputs. And let's see, Zeta is below average. I'm going to guess this is not a desirable recipe. It's definitely less desirable than recipe 4. Right now. Oh, what just happened to my mouse? Uh, Alright, and then... Two more of the straight recipes to go. Uh, this is number seven. This is number eight. All right, so our outputs are C Omega. Inputs are Phi, gamma. Phi, gamma. Considering gamma is really low, I would expect this to be not the recipe we want to do. So these values are all so high, like the lowest one is 3.9k. Because where any one recipe we do is still going to be pretty far from... All of this being balanced. Messing with people's heads. Law and order on the TV in the background. What? That double ship launch sound. <laughs> yes. Maybe I should mix that together. We'll have a little... A little sound redeem. Clap, clap. All right, and then last one of these uh, folding recipes. Output is lambda gamma. 
lambda gamma and input is epsilon omega epsilon epsilon omega epsilon omega lambda gamma perfect all right and that gives us 4.2k it's one of the worst recipes we could do um considering gamma and epsilon are both below average that's not surprising uh, and then we need two more of these um, we're kind of running out of numbers here inversion i could do i but then what's the other one i kind of want something that sort of represents inversion on the signal but uh, let's just go ij inversion 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 and inversion number two Okay, and then don't forget to connect these. All right, so regular inversion is, or I mean, one of the inversion recipes. It's not exactly that one of them's regular or not. Uh, zeta, theta, gamma, omega. Well, I guess we can do that as the outputs to this one. Wait, that doesn't even go there. Uh, zeta, theta... Gamma Omega Zeta Theta Gamma Omega And this one's Lambda Xi Epsilon Phi Lambda C Epsilon Phi Zeta Theta Gamma Omega. I don't see any duplicates. All right, lambda. Uh, lambda C epsilon phi. Epsilon and phi. Would one of these... I would be surprised if one of these was desirable. Uh, let's see. Zeta, theta, gamma, omega. Zeta... Theta is above average. Gamma is below average. Omega is below average. Maybe it would be good to do that one. 3.9k. There it is. That is... That's actually the best recipe to run right now. Looks like it's working. All right, so uh, so we calculate how far from the average any one of these recipes would put us. This is no recipe. Uh, 4.1k. Running this recipe would put us at 3.9k. Um, and all of these are just saying everything greater than or equal to this thing, output this thing, which means only output this if it is the minimum out of all of the signals coming in. Uh, so this is our min function, basically. So we want to run recipe J, which is this one. Uh, next, we need some combinators to make that happen. And... Oh. I would love to, um, I would love to have the logic to also check 
that all of these inputs are needed before we input them and we don't have any wasted here. But I think we've got enough Arcospheres now to just not worry about that. Um, and the gains that we get from this system working very well kind of offset um, the trouble. Alright, so we're going to do... We could just control it on output. I think we've got enough. Hmm. Yeah, that gets rid of the massive lag time from this. Speaking of which, let's give it some modules. Uh, where's our gravimetrics facility? Beacon. We can get everything on a beacon if we squeeze it in here. I'll get rid of these combinators in the end anyway. Alright, and modules go here as well. So I guess we'll just input unconditionally. And then it's the output combinators where we need some kind of standards. Alright. So I think it's just... I think we just run this wire straight up here. Put it in a little bit of an awkward spot for that. Maybe if I move them up just one tile. Perhaps we can reach here. Fantastic. Alright, round we go. This would look a bit better if... Oops. Uh, why don't I just get rid of those ones I just added? Thank you, Valda. Uh, I'll just connect this to the combinators we already have and then turn them around. Uh, and I think that'll look a little bit... not that one. Look a little bit better. Okay, so this one is recipe J. Has to be greater than zero. Uh, recipe one. Why don't we just copy that around and it'll be slightly fewer clicks. Recipe two. Recipe I. Recipe 3, recipe 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and we already did this one. Alright, and then... Uh, I think I'll put this here. Unconditional inputs. And then we're going to turn these around. The ones on the wire. All right. Uh, let's do a display. So we're going to do... Uh, well, we need eight of these, right? We're going to do just a line that's always on. 
just show the average. Um, so let's say, well, whatever, we'll figure it out in a sec. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And we're gonna, I guess, get from, yeah, we just get from this, this wire right here. So we've already got signals for zero equals average for these. Um, let's just go tick. Arcosphere lambda less than zero. Less than negative one. Less than negative two. Less than negative three. And less than negative four. Arcosphere lambda greater than zero. Greater than one. Greater than two. Really? Hold on. One, two, three, and four. Yeah, so Arcosphere Lambda is way above average. Okay. And then we copy those across. You pre craft all the recipes. Uh, yes. I think if we're gonna have, like, wasted inputs like this, um, which it would take lots and lots of combinators to avoid, uh, I think I would rather just have the recipe outputs waiting to go. So it's sort of like we have an instant recipe. Alright, so it's gonna take... Uh, 5, 10... Um, it's, it's going to take 70 pairs of clicks to get this sorted out. Maybe I'll take a little break from it to not get Purple Tunnel. doesn't matter if we change this one. One, two, three, four, five. All right. Uh, I note that we're not doing any recipes right now. We are trying to do inversion, but there's no epsilons. Okay, yeah, this might... Hmm. This might require a little direct intervention. But on the other hand, I could... We don't need these once this is balanced well enough, but we could turn C into Epsilon, for example. Um, so let's do that. Also, we need some input-output here. Uh, we're going... because there's more than five types of sphere, a filtered blacklist is not going to cut it. We need to detect what is in this chest. Uh, and whitelist based on uh, what we don't have enough of. So I think uh, what is in the chest we need as a negative. And we'll have a positive signal for how much we want to have of each thing in the chest. And then that's going to go to our uh, whitelist set filters. So let's just say we only want one of each type in the chest for the moment. Whoops. Whoops. 
we don't have any epsilons. That's our problem right now. Okay. And this one... I haven't actually... Normally I use set requests for this. But we're just going to go... Uh, let's see. Gamma C C. I guess I can just request one of each and it'll get done. Yeah. Uh, let's make that two. All right, so that's going to churn out a bunch of epsilons, which. Hopefully that alone is going to be enough to... I see only five types right now, so probably not. We'll let that run a few times. Meanwhile, we are at Boanestra. Um, maybe I'll want to extend this platform down further, so... Why is this so dark? Good grief. I'll put this over here. Um, we'll put down some power poles slash robo network extensions. Now, where did I put that power plant? Here it is. Uh, it is a little bigger than I remembered. I think I'll actually put it down here. I'm glad I didn't anchor here. Also, apparently our power is... Oh no, it's it's linked up here. Nope. We actually can't afford 10 gigawatts right now. Weirdly enough. Uh, this thing. We need to get rid of it. All right. How is our power system okay now? Uh, we've got heat. We've got water. This seems to be climbing back up, but I don't quite understand why. Do we win if we charge this thing fully? No, I don't think so. Uh, Alright, so we've got this inversion happening now. Fantastic. Maybe I will stop running this little recipe here for now. We'll see if it stays in motion. Um, what's the next arcosphere? Zeta. 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 And Zeta. 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 And Zeta. So Zeta is way below average. Which, yes. Um, I could put some combinators here just to show which is which. Uh, it seems like we're stuck again. What recipe does it want to run here? Uh, in version J still. We're missing C. Wait, did it already turn all of the C into... Oh no. Um, well, I could take this one. Maybe, maybe we can get back to balance, get back to this thing being in motion just by manipulating these inserters. Since I've got all of the outputs 
from all of these recipes waiting to go. Well, almost all of them. The radar pylons take some charging time. Uh, that too. How much can they hold? A lot more than I expected, apparently. Alright, let's get some... Uh, that's the wrong thing. Let's get some scaffolding in here. Uh, come to think of it, I hope we have enough. Uh, I'm sure we will. This We carry enough for several blocks of uh, solar panels like this. Well, let's count. Cal ghosts, uh, 6.2k. We've got 22k scaffolding here. I think we're going to be alright. Although, uh, I should really hurry up and put down a supercharger. Otherwise, we're going to have problems. The bot stole my scaffolding and now I can't place it. Alright, supercharger, let's go. Fantastic. Back to the arcospheres. Nothing is moving. Uh, I might just try and finish this display, actually. Um, because then we can... Then we can see really, really quickly uh, what we need to change. I can also keep track of which ones I've finished here. Except I haven't done this part. Uh, theta. 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 Theta and Theta. So we desperately need Zeta and we desperately need one other one. Um, let's find out which one it is. Epsilon. It's Epsilon. No. We're not that short on Epsilon. It's just below average. The average is 17. Uh, is it Omega? It's Omega. How do we get... No, wait. Omega is... It's 7 below the average. But it's not at zero. Gamma? We have zero gamma. Okay. Wait, no we don't. Yes we do. What? Input signals gamma one. But I don't see any gamma in here. What's up with that? Each... Oh, right, it's from this thing here. Yeah, no, that's not actually the inputs for all of these. Okay. Uh... Gamma, gamma... Gamma, but why is it... Hold on, shouldn't... Oh, yeah, yeah, it's throwing it off because we've actually got zero. Because because we're missing a certain type of arcosphere, our each calculations are wrong. Hmm. Alright, uh, let's plonk down our... Uh... Theta to gamma. So we need theta, theta, and 
Lambda. Rezart, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Holy Spidertron Army, of course. Schnipper, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Let's at least try and get it to the point where we have eight types of Arcosphere here. Um, so what else are we missing? Uh, oh, there's our answer. No, wait. Yeah, it's C and... Uh, uh, gamma. Let's do this as well. All right, so epsilon, epsilon, theta goes in here. Do we have everything we need? Yes, we do. I think that's going to do it. This will probably balance it to the point where we don't need the aggregate recipes anymore. Probably. Uh, let's finish our display, I guess. I didn't do the positive part for Omega. Alright, so that's Omega done. Uh, gamma is negatives only, I think. Gamma. Who to go? Uh, what have we got? Phi. Not gamma. Phi. 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 And phi. Let's go up here to start with. Okay, so phi is way above average. And then... Epsilon. Epsilon is way below average, so let's... Oh, we already did this. Maybe not up here. Epsilon. 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 And... Epsilon. Oh, I think that's our display finished. Uh, so we've got a lot of imbalance right now. Theta is actually... There's no theta, so it thinks it's average. That's a problem. Um, let's... Put gamma to theta. Gamma is actually way above average now. So it's gamma, gamma, theta. I guess we can just run these in circles until this system manages to balance. That might be okay. Yeah, I, I, I could literally just put down all eight of the uh, aggregate recipes. And theoretically, that should allow it to balance. And then we probably shouldn't need the aggregate recipes after that. Also, we could probably stand to put more than one of... Why are there nine in here? Wait, what? How did we end up with nine... Arcospheres ever in this chest? That seems very strange to me since we're only aiming to get one of each. Oh, it probably... No? 
No, the instant it puts this type in, it'll stop trying to... Like, it won't get go for one more swing. I wonder if... The only thing I can think of is... The logistic ne network is sending a negative signal for something that's trying to be picked up. Which would actually be pretty convenient. Yeah, that would be extremely convenient, actually. Yeah, there it is. You just saw negative theta. I mean, negative two theta. Wait, that's... Yeah, so the, the negative input from this is... Well, we can see the positive input. That's how much is actually in here. Uh, it's kind of hard to catch it in the act. Yes, logistics sends negatives for things that are requested. Check L and scroll down. Yeah, I knew that because I've seen it from when we connect to a uh, RoboPort to read the logistic network. Uh, it gives negatives when bots are picking up things that are sometimes a problem. But... I didn't know you could get it from just connecting to a chest. But in this case, that's actually incredibly useful. It's very, very helpful. Um, I might still... Well, once things are balanced, which it looks like they are. Beautiful. So we should be able to get rid of these aggregate recipes now. And count on count on this staying balanced. So we've actually got more than ten of each type of arcosphere, excluding the uh, excluding the ones that we've already got just in these machines waiting to be taken out or processed. That's actually pretty good. The negative is only for things that are not enough in stock. Huh. Looks like it's balancing now. Yeah, it is. So now that these have stopped, I'll get rid of them. And we should have even more Arcospheres. And we can definitely... So our minimum is now 13, and that's not counting, like, all the Arcospheres that are just waiting to be swapped or to be picked out of the output as well. That's excellent. Um, I'm going to bump this up to, like, five of each. Wait, wait, wait. Maybe not. Uh, what's 48 over 8? Six. Yeah, we can fit six. Um, I'll go for five of each type that we want in our buffer chest. Uh, why do I have two faders? Whoops. Alright, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Cool. So we're going to have a chest uh, almost full of Arcospheres here. A little bit of extra room so it can put in... Uh, it can bring in one more when a bot is requesting. And that's it. Very, very good. Six is max, yeah. Alright, uh, and I guess that is Arcospheres. And we've got buffer chest for input, buffer chest for output. So it's not going to bring it from here to here. 
but requester chests can take from this one. Which is what we're using. Oh, I guess we've only got buffer chests over here, so we need to update those. Yeah, all of our... All of our inputs um, for these machines are going to be requester chests from now on. That's why they're not in motion right now. Uh, we don't need archospheres down here, do we? No. And we will need to click this button every single time. I still do like having the input controls on these so we don't have wasted inputs on these machines, even if we're going to saturate the inputs for the swapping. I think that's everything. Very elegant. Fantastic, indeed. Okay. And with our renewed flow of Nacrotite, uh, shouldn't be too much longer before we've... Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, I kind of expected this. Um, it's probably a mixture of... Oh. It's worse than I thought. Actually, is it though? Uh, it's not quite as bad as I thought a moment ago. Yeah, no. Uh, it's nowhere near that bad. So, I was expecting to have all of the ships that we had queued up at Nalvis Orbit drop off their Naquitite and then we get a burst of it and then nothing for a while. Uh, and or also kind of running out of um, antimatter stream temporarily because we've got the demand for it comes in such bursts and we're still catching up. Um, but our antimatter stream production should have been fairly consistent over the last while. I, I don't like that dip, but it's definitely not zero. Yeah, uh, it should catch up in time. Is this train okay? Yes, it is. Alright, cool. Why the run on cool thermo fluid all of a sudden? Right then. Uh, let's see if we can fit our power plant now. Fantastic. If I am going to keep this uh, backup generator here... I don't think it will... I, I don't think I will. Just because... With this thing consuming 10 gigawatts... Um, even if we store up 10,000 degrees here, it's not going to last long. So let's just not worry about it. 
let's put down our new reactor. We can't actually put this in the middle, can we? No. Hello, fellow space friends. I am this guy. Well, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Are you looking forward to the restart? Oh yeah, definitely. Even if I'm going to take a little break before I do that, I am looking forward to it. Maybe add K2. Yeah, I probably will add K2. Bye, cow. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, partly so that, you know, the next playthrough is significantly different. Partly because I am looking forward to things like uh, the improved Roboport. Um, I'm also going to use, like, AAI for some big containers, and, oh, that's a problem. Uh, AAI for some big containers, and probably, I forget the name of it, but there's, like, a train loader slash unloader mod, uh, that has just, like, one entity per cargo wagon. Uh, that's going to be a lot better for UPS, and I've... I, I don't dislike making complicated systems to load and unload trains. Um, but, you know, I've definitely shown that I can do that. It's, it's, it's not so much cheating as it is just... Let's make this part easier and also not clobber the UPS. Is that mini loader? Um, that is one thing I will be using as well. Yes. K2 has some big containers. Good. Or is it another one? Um, it's not the mini loader I was talking about just now. Uh, that is. Oh. Uh, let me just. There we go. Wait, what? Why are these bots not moving still? We did... Oh, this is charging, that's why. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll use mini loaders as well, but I was thinking of uh, a mod I've seen where it's... I, I think I have the mod. Oh, can I see it from here? Maybe it's in mod settings? No, it wouldn't be. Uh, you basically have, like, this one rectangular thing around where the cargo wagon goes uh, and it'll input or output for the whole cargo wagon. Bulk rail loader? I think that's it. Yes. Sheep say meh. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, and thanks for pointing that out. We're already putting our ice in. Fantastic. We've got our fuel... Uh, I only requested five in each of these. Um, let's put some buffer chests here. And I want uh, canisters. All of the antimatter canisters. And go in here. I'll remove it from the requests over here. That actually doesn't do enough. Because bots don't trade from buffer to buffer. We need to wait till we melt a bunch of this ice before we try running this thing, really. By the way, if you're going SEK2, you should disable the K2 loaders and chest mod settings, since they're redundant with AAI. Okay. Bulk is nice for planetary, but looks a bit silly in space. The bulk rail loader? Eh, it's fine. Root class? Good to see you again. Well. Welcome, hope you're doing well. Alright. Uh, we don't need that much water. 
That's interesting. These are half full while this is significantly empty. Huh. Yeah, we want these uh, fluid containers maybe half full. Um, because the amount of steam that comes back and can be stored in the system is actually quite a lot. Um, so it's actually very easy to overfill this. Maybe the missing pipes? They would probably be a good idea. I'm surprised how many there are. Um, it's just regular pieces of pipe that are missing, I think. Uh, 74. We also need more condenser turbines. Uh, can we handcraft this right now? We need four condenser turbines and 74 pipe. Oh, I've got... Oh, let's just turn on my RoboPod. And what about the condenser turbines? We've already got them. Fantastic. Alright, so this thing is built. We've got enough power to run the inserters. Let's put some fuel in. And get this thing warmed up. For those that have just tuned in, what are you up to? Uh, Siakon, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, we are building a power plant for the giant space wedding ring. Uh, it demands 10 gigawatts of power. And if we beam power to this location, uh, we don't get zero beamed power, but we may as well get zero beamed power. Uh, so we built a antimatter reactor here. Uh, this thing will do 11 gigawatts. We've got a bit more um, high temp turbine generators here than we need, but, well, I guess it's only one more than we need, actually. Um, but symmetry. So yeah, we are burning our precious antimatter canisters. Um, or not the canisters themselves, those come back. But we are burning our precious antimatter here for electricity. Uh, surprisingly, we only get 20 gigajoules of energy from each canister, which is only two and a half times what nuclear reactors, uh, sorry, uranium fuel cells give us. But more importantly, this can go to 5,000 degrees, uh, which gives us a lot more energy with far fewer uh, machines or anything. And there's also a lot more stored energy here. Is this one of the SE victories? Uh, I don't know. The only SE victory that I know of for a fact is the spaceship victory, which is shown uh, in the research screen. And we're already putting more fuel in. Didn't even get to 5,000 degrees yet. Uh, but we're about to. 4.5k. 4.6k. I'm going to need to set up a delivery system for this place as well. Uh, I, I caught a little sneak peek of what someone had done at Foenestro. I didn't see too much detail, but I noticed they had... Uh, media defense installations. I hope that's not actually necessary here. It'd be nice if all that we need to truck in here is uh, antimatter canisters. I guess I need to design a ship to come out here. Why don't we... I don't have what I need here, do I, to make a ship? I'm pretty sure I don't. Okay, that's surprising. 
Uh, what else have I got? Floor? Uh, that would appear to be a yes. 47. Okay, so we got a little bit of everything. We could make a small ship. I could even build it exactly where I want the landing spot to be. I'm thinking smallest possible antimatter ship. Also, can I actually just swap out this floor underneath it? Yes, I can. Oh, you can run fast on this. I wonder if that would be cheaper than... Let's see. One, sca one space platform scaffold, four steel, one heavy girder. Compared to... Four heat shielding, four aeroframe bulkhead. Probably not. All right, uh, we need a antimatter engine. Uh, I think I want this ship to be as small as possible. Do we, uh, we don't have an antimatter engine here, do we? I could still, like, design this ship so that we can build around it. Actually, maybe not really. Uh, actually, actually. Uh, let's, let's not. Let's just design it over here like we usually do. So first things first, we need more floor than we're actually going to use. We can just put a little spaceship down here. It's our universe and we can put what we like in it. Yes. It really is. Every happy ship needs a little friend. <laughs> yes. A little resupply friend. Uh, okay. I should probably start with the clamp. For once. And then antimatter engine. Uh, how about... Something like this. I hate that it's not going to be symmetrical if we don't use two engines. What the hell, let's use two engines. It's it's not quite going to be the smallest ship. Actually, it's going to look rather... It's, it's going to look like a souped up... Uh, what do you call it? Like a muscle car or something. <laughs> Is this going to be streamlined? Only time will tell. Lasers here. Wait, what am I doing? We need a power source. Uh, yeah, we're not going to be able to, like... Okay. If this was sandbox, I would definitely run the experiment. Of could we just give it some Naquium accumulators and expect it to get all the way... Uh, expect it to get all the way to Foenestra. Uh, 
but yeah, I think we are going to need a power plant, actually. Uh, I might stick with this, though. How small could we make it? We already did this experiment somewhat with our ship over here. Uh, I think nuclear is probably the way to go. I don't want it to be dependent on the same power source fuel that it's delivering. Um, so we need probably just one. Yeah. One condenser turbine was enough to move this thing slowly. Um, but we'll be using like a fifth of this power. So it's really just going to be... We're really just going to be cramming one nuclear reactor into the smallest ship we can with a single condenser turbine. Uh, and what would be the best way to do that? Possibly the way that we've already done it. Oh, Piccadilly's lets me move that. That's nice. Oh, let's check on our arcospheres. Uh, I was expecting to say perfectly balanced as all things should be, but not. It's actually pretty good. Um, XC is like five above the average. It's seven above the average, six above the average. And we've got enough of everything, more importantly. And that's not what, and that's not counting what's in here, which is like uh, five of everything. Uh, so yeah, working pretty well. Uh, I think we still need more Logibots here. I thought we had them delivered. We're looking for 2k Logibots. Oh, they're here. Okay, so why... Because this doesn't request Logibots. Also, yeah, no. Okay. That's pretty simple. Alright, cool. Uh, let's go back to designing the smallest antimatter ship. Um, so the way we did it over here was just a straight line. So that the water could go back up this way. I don't know that we're going to be able to do better than that. Um, I'll just put that there for reference. We need to get the steam. And then... Uh, that might be a little bit of an improvement. Probably not. It's about the same. Yeah, it's pretty much the same. It's a little bit wider. Oh, it wouldn't actually fit inside this, so... I I think we're just going to go with this, and it needs to go here, or here, so that it doesn't collide with our antimatter. So water supply would be there. So I think this is as compact as it gets, pretty much. Uh, we still need room for our console.
at least we get to put that in the middle. And we will, of course, be needing some lasers. Uh, I, ma I imagine this thing is going to be rather fast. So... Why don't we give it a shield projector? Considering its speed, that is probably going to cover, cover everything. Uh, because of how narrow it is. Is there no way I can, like, take advantage of this unused space on the side? For these 4x4 four four things? Doesn't seem like it. This has to be in the middle. Otherwise it's kind of pointless. Alright, Thanos, indeed. Essie, indeed. Mr. Gecko, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, we can definitely put lasers on the sides, though. I mean, we will be doing that. Let's start with this. See if we can get away with a little bit less streamline wise. I imagine that'll be more than enough. What's the thud sound? Uh, that's spaceships taking off and landing. Streamline is only 46%. Huh. Alright. Maybe I'll get a laser up the front. Let me just remove this part already. Also, can I put this over here? It'll be symmetrical. Oh, that's going to be the wrong fluid. Uh, but there's nothing in here right now. Yes, there is. Okay. Would you be persuaded to step aside for the moment? I think we'll be sticking with this part, definitely. It's counting the excess floors. Uh, I think for Streamline it doesn't. Well, we can find out. Let's Integrity check. 92%. Integrity check. 92%. Okay, cool. Is it really not possible to make this a bit shorter? I could move this over a couple of tiles if we resupply the water a bit differently, but it wouldn't be enough to squeeze our console in here. Um... One, two, three, four, five, if we somehow... Uh, let me just copy this here again in case I want to refer to it. Move the condenser turbine. If I were to somehow squeeze this in here, we might need some heat pipe to make that happen. Heat 
pipe, heat pipe. And so it's going to be a short trip, so I don't think we need two tanks. We can put the console down here somewhere. Fluid tank over. Uh, is this going to line up okay? Yes. Or we could do undergrounds as well. Oh, that's not so good. Yeah, I think we'll have to... ...do it like that. And then water resupply... And go here or here. That seems fine, actually. Well, that part doesn't. Uh, this would be fine. Okay. I, I think I like this better, definitely. So we can make the front a bit shorter now. Turbine to the left wall, console to the side of it, tanks above them, horizontal, not vertical. Horizontal, not vertical. Well, we could do a tank here as well. But I don't think it's needed. And maybe... Maybe we could have, like, one laser here. Got a good design going. My comment was from a few minutes ago. Okay. Imagine five lasers and a shield projector will be enough. Hull stress is going to be like 300 or so. Well, it depends how many containers we want. Well, we're going to need a couple of containers here. I'm thinking we could even... have like two of them. So this is going to request both nuclear fuel and the antimatter stream, uh, antimatter canisters, and this one's going to request, well it's not going to request used up uranium fuel cells, but uh, also, yeah, I guess it is actually. Because we can just have used up uranium fuel cells get thrown into the train system. Uh, used up uranium fuel cells and anti-magnetic uh, canisters. And this one is... One stack of these, and many stacks of these. I'm sure that's going to last at least a little while. Uh, we will be needing... At least one accumulator, which, I mean, there's only really room for one or literally one or two or three, actually. Don't forget the good whiskey, indeed. 
Whiskers, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, what's our streamline? 92%, okay. Um, is there a universe where three lasers is enough for this? It depends how fast this thing's gonna go. Uh, I think we might stretch this forward just a little bit. I can't pick the dollies this, right? No. If I put lasers here, I'm guessing that's not streamlined. I have a bit smaller ship than this with two engines and only three lasers. Those lasers are not enough at full speed. I think 150 to 200. Will it be enough with the shield projector as well, though? All right, that's 92%. Um, I think we'll go for five lasers and put this here. And we'll just have to have that little gap there if we don't want to make the ship slightly longer. Oh, actually, I, I think I want this up here. Or maybe I could even reduce the laser count by one if I put uh, accumulators down here. Would have an asymmetrical defense. Nah, this one tile can stay. It's fine. Also, I'm surprised we don't have Naquium accumulators here. Uh, I only made a handful. And I don't really want to, like, mass produce them just to have them shipped out this way. Uh, it's fine. Let's see. Naquium. Accumulators. Where did I put the signal? Hmm. Oh, here it is. So we're literally just asking for one of that in the solar panel. But that's not going to reach our request threshold over here. One stack. Uh, it's fine. It's not that expensive, is it? One cube each? That's very expensive. Uh, maybe I could get our Spidertron, like one of them, to carry one. That's nice and balanced. We'll get the yellow spider to carry like five. over here. So we literally had one accumulator up for grabs right now, right? No, three. Okay. That's perfect, actually. I was thinking three accumulators here. Uh, so our conditions on these two inserters are going to be speed signal which is going to be reading the accumulator charge, is less than 99%. Uh, is going to be our condition for taking out the used up fuel cell. Read and contents pulse. And this one's going to be used up uranium fuel cell greater than zero. Uh, we'll put a constant combinator here to get it started. And 
we'll wait for our spiders. Meanwhile, at Boanestra. Ooh. I like that yellow... I, I like that uh, purple-pink glow. It's pretty neat. So we've still got plenty of antimatter canisters, of course. Probably don't need this supercharger. How much power do we have here now? It should be over 11 gigawatts. 7.3? Oh wait, that's like... Oh, that's 7.3 megawatts that we're using right now. Okay, cool. Uh, I guess we can link this thing. The thing is, as soon as we link it up to Bone Astro, we're going to be burning fuel. So I kind of want the um, resupply logistics sorted out first. Uh, I also need to get water into this thing. Which is... Looking just a little bit awkward right now. That's not going to reach across. Uh, I guess I could actually just do it here. Okay. Uh, we need to limit this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, we're fine. Uh, let's put... But we're going to remove that. If we put a clamp here, we're going to remove it later anyway. So we're going to do the usual here. Less than 24.5 thousand. We can get our... Actually, let's wait for the accumulators. They are just about to arrive. Our spiders are going to get a bit... awkward, I think. Uh, let's just do a check while we wait for that. 100% streamline. There's our accumulators. Spiders can go back home. And... Oh. Uh, I think we're going to use red wire. For this part. to the clamp pass-throughs as well. Yep, that's fine. Alright, so as usual we're going to connect red from the clamps to our spaceship console uh, input. We're going to connect green on the clamps to read things like water storage. Uh, we're going to pretend for a second that there's a used up uranium fuel cell in here. Fantastic. And we've got our water. Very good. Alright, I think we are just about ready. I'll send this thing to Foanestra and have it anchor, and we'll build uh, the output station around it. Make it nice and easy.
Uh, we will be needing constant combinator. And I'll give it a speed signal for the moment. Oh wait, it's already receiving a speed, a speed signal. So target speed, if the accumulators were all full, would be 300. Uh, what's our clamp ID going to be? Let's see. Antimatter canister? 494. Let's use that. We need to bring ice as well. So let's say... Up to 2,000... Antimatter canisters? And a bunch of ice. Uh, this would be 40 stacks, 41, plus 7. Uh, 13, 97. Alright, that should be way more than enough. Name it, definitely. Aha, uh -huh, knew it. Wait, what? Uh... And I guess this is antimatter canister shuttle. Now let's just call it Boenestra resupply. For needing to bring ice, yes. Uh, and the ID here was 494. Wait, that's not it. 494 to 494 to 494 to 494 So we can do the clamps on either side. Alright, let's give this thing a test. Launch. That's Deadwood 4. There's our new ship. Uh, um, now this orbit... I forgot one little detail. Can you guess what it is? It's fine. We'll be back in 20 seconds. Also, I don't have room for a pylon. Uh, so, medium poles? I, I don't think we even have medium poles back here. Uh, wait, let's look for... Yeah. We can use the... Oh, we don't even have those either. I think we'll use the add-on pylons. And maybe I'll consider using mediums someday. What's this bring us? What ice? That figures. All right, ETA zero seconds. Fantastic. Uh, this is more than likely not going to line up right. But then again, there's no reason to bother. We've already got the fuel and water. Yeah, I imagine, uh, I imagine medium poles are going to cost non-zero, uh, hull stress, and the little add-on pylons are probably free. And we actually do have more hull stress than container stress. 
In that case... One job, indeed. Meowgumin, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, I think I would rather just have... Well, a thousand ice, I think, is going to be way more than we need anyway. Um, I can probably have the bots empty this, actually. But yeah, we'll just make sure we have a bit more storage here. Bot snake go burr. Meow, indeed. All right, so eh, I'm sure two K antimatter canisters is enough. Let's just take some extra uranium fuel cells. And our add-on uh, power poles go here, and we also need to connect all of these uh, accumulators here, and here, and here. And here, and then all of this stuff. Oh, and don't forget this accumulator. What a lovely mess. I'll have to wait till the poles are actually there before I can clean it up a bit. Uh, where are the poles? They're not here yet. Where are you going with that? I think you're dead. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, do our spiders have these little poles already? Uh, maybe. Maybe not. Yeah, they do. Okay, cool. Let's just bring our spiders into it again. Let's try powering this thing up. Looking good. Oh, it even makes the sound. Nice. Alright, so now what? Ooh. Uh oh, oh. Uh, is it? Yeah, it just went around in a circle. I'm going to take a wild guess and say that the glyphs that we've found in the mysterious structures line up with these. Oh, I think I see what's going on here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight glyphs. And in our screenshots from our travels, we have 11? Huh. 11 glyphs around the outside 
Did we just lose power? We just lost power. Why did we lose power? Not enough water? Not enough water. Okay, I kind of expected that. Kind of. So... It's not... Just pick the glyphs that match... Uh, what's on the ground at the mysterious structures. Because we don't have the same number of glyphs there. Really stark rate, indeed. Rith Rabbit. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Red Craft as well. What is that? We're trying to figure it out. Anchor all your spare ships. Run it off reactor power. Uh, all the ships provide power. More than they consume. Giant wedding ring glows. Nice, indeed. Okay. Uh, why do we just... Oh, because we're short on steam. Uh, we're wasting fuel because of that. Alright, let me just... Temporarily disable wasting any more steam. Uh, any more fuel, that is. Do you know if that part of the mod is completed now? Uh, I have no idea. Alright, we have... Our power poles. Let me just tidy up this mess. And what a mess it is. That's a bit better. Um, so that should be it. Well, let's give it a try. Oh, and Nestra. Take two. Looking good. Seems like we've barely got enough power. Oh, I guess it's... Oh, no, 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 no. Uh... Back, back to Nervous Orbit. We, we did miss just one, uh, one thing that we need to connect. Just the one. Alright, anchor. Luckily the accumulators carried us home. Alright, that seems fine. Actually, I might just get rid of that. Alright, take three. Oh, and Estra. I'll wait till this charges. Alright, away we go. Already up to 93. That's pretty promising. I guess I didn't need to have a separate, uh, a shared chest for these two. Um, we're still way under all stress for containers. Uh, but we need to see how this thing goes at max speed. It's approaching 200. Looks like no, because some parts of the sign not implemented, but you can interact with ring and solve puzzle. Huh. 
205, 206, 207. I think we're going to get like 220, 230, 240 max. Judging by the density of asteroids we're seeing, I'm a little concerned about something hitting the back, but it looks like we have laser coverage. Uh, it looks like maybe the shield projector was totally unnecessary. We are consuming pretty much all of the power that we can produce here. It's actually really well balanced. All right, what's our speed? 224, that's pretty good. And these, it looks like these are the biggest rocks that we're gonna get thrown at us. Yeah, I, th I suspect that the shield projector is not needed for this one, just because the ship is so small. Alright, what's our ETA? Uh, less than four minutes. That's pretty good. Alright, so clamp ID 494. And it's gonna land about here. Uh, do I have a clamp handy? down a bit. Maybe one more. Just remove scaffolding. Yep. Cool. Four ninety four. Whoops, I did not mean to do that. Uh, we don't really need to do any fluid resupply on this end. We will need some logic, though. I think I would like to just leave this ship here uh, until it's been emptied. If it's been emptied of either antimatter canisters or ice, it can leave. How many bots do we have in this? I think I just want 50 logistic bots in this place. Should probably make sure we have a few repair packs just in case. I guess we're going to need to read from the chests. So we're going to say... Hmm, I would actually like to wait until the canisters are here as well. I'm sure it'll be fine. Alright, so we're going to read from these containers. Uh, that's going to go to our past three.
so we know what's in the ship. And we're going to say... I can do it with one combinator. If I say anything less than zero, output spaceship launch, destination is Nalvis, uh, Nalvis orbit rather, orbit 317, destination Nalvis orbit, if anything is less than zero, output spaceship launch. Um, I guess it's possible with what we learned from how it reads from uh, the chests that we get a little negative signal. Um, from the chest sometimes when the bots are doing pickup things. So we'll say anything less than negative 100. And then we'll put a constant over here for ice. Negative uh, 100. And antimatter canister. Huh? Oh, here it is. Negative 100. I guess less than or equal. Alright, so if we receive that big of a negative signal, does that mean it's, it's not going to launch the moment it gets here? I'm pretty sure. Also, how far away is it? I want to see this happen. Two minutes. Why is the antimatter do off balance between the divergent reactor supply boxes? Uh, what do you mean by that? Divergent reactor supply boxes. Do you mean like the inputs here? Um, I'm only requesting a small amount for the direct requester chests and I've got some buffers over here. Uh, I guess it's not going to take... I could use a set request system. We're already just using requester chests for the ice, and I think that's fine. Um, but because I want to keep the fuel balanced like this, Akira? Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, because I want to keep the antimatter canisters buffered like this, I would like to... Well, even if I do remove the requests from those other buffer chests, uh, from the buffer chests in the ship, um, it's not going to... Alright, this, this is kind of silly, but one thing we could do Anything greater than zero, or if anything not equal to zero, if there is a ship here, actually I'm going to have to change the way this wire is connected. If there is a ship here, output uh, antimatter canister. Set requests. 
Request from bucket chests. And then... Enable if everything equals zero, put it into the purple. Except then we would need an arithmetic just to make this larger than one. Actually, no, I could do antimatter canister input count. Yeah, 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 no, if, if antimatter canister... Uh, greater than zero, output antimatter canister. Well, that's just... I could just request everything that's in the ship into this requester chest. No, because then, then it'll bring back the um, used up uranium fuel cells. All right, so we're basically doing a antimatter canister times one with this decider combinator. So all of the antimatter canisters in the ship request here. And then put them into the purple chest once the ship is gone. Um, it will cause the bots to bring antimatter canisters from here. Uh, does it make a difference if I make these storage chests instead? I'm doing fine, just wake up having my breakfast. Nice. Oh yeah, I don't want to make these storage chests because the bots will put this back into the ship. Seems like you were close to the end of your playthrough. Yep. Do you have any plans for what to play after the victory screen? Yeah, a few. Um, so I do want to do another playthrough of Space Exploration. Uh, maybe I won't get straight into it. Um, I'm definitely going to be playing some other things as well, Oxygen not included. Uh, maybe some more Terraria. I'm kind of getting into that right now. Uh, I want to do... Well, I've started on a... I already beat it on Expert without doing boss arenas. I want to attempt to beat everything without boss arenas in Master. So not building giant sky platforms or anything like that. Still at it? Nice. How's it going? Vin Shady, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, and yeah, if I didn't say so, I also want to play some Oxygen Not Included on stream. Alright, we're about to find out if this is... Oh, that's interesting. Wow, it's already gone. Um, that actually worked better than I could have hoped for. The bots didn't really take any of the canisters from up here down to here. They just took what was in the ship. Um, and we got our magnetic canisters as well. Oh, no, nope, there's still antimatter canisters in here. Wait, what? How many are in here? 268. Did I do this part wrong? If anything is less than or equal to negative 100. Oh, I think it ran out of ice. Yes, so that's actually working. Okay. Uh, I think we'll just request all of the ice. And we need to build a station for this back at Nalvis Orbit. Um, where would be convenient? So we need to resupply... Well, everything that's available here, actually. I could use the old battleship spot. That's actually kind of perfect. Uh, we're one tile off this lining up with the water. 
You could do it like this. Just move all of these up a tile. Um, I'll copy paste this so that it will have the same settings. I guess I could have just waited three seconds there. And we need to bring antimatter stream into it somehow. Uh, I guess we could put that in from the left. Might be a bit more convenient. Antimatter stream is one tile below the clamp. One tile below the clamp. That's actually super awkward. But we've got a lot more room here than it might otherwise appear. Why don't we just put that there for a second and we can see very clearly where this needs to go. That actually lines up really well. Seven? Eight tiles. Rip. And we don't need any input control on this one. This is all in the same block, yep. So we've already got the resupply for the ice, the uranium fuel cells, and the antimatter canisters. So now we just need the logic for when this thing leaves. I think I would like to just have it leave as soon as it's full. But full is a little bit far away at the moment. Um, how much antimatter fuel do we have here right now? Yeah, canisters, that is. 576. That sounds like a pretty good start. Uh, I'll wait until... I think we're going to need a lot more ice before we try running this thing for long enough to figure it out again. What are you working on at the moment? Uh, basically a power plant. Well, we've got the power plant. It's really the logistics to support this power plant uh, so that we can run this giant space wedding ring. Uh, Fraser K, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, so I think this end is working just fine, and yeah, we're pretty much just waiting on more ice. Uh, I probably want to leave the construction ship here for now. Probably. Uh, I think we'll just go back for now. We'll just give it some time until it's until it's got everything it needs. Then again, what are we running back for? What are we gonna do? We're currently just waiting on more Naquitite for research. Uh, this is done. Ooh. Oh. Oh. I do wonder if. Could I, should I put a constant combinator to pretend we've got, like, one less of each arcosphere or something? So that if there's zero of anything, it'll actually say negative one. But then if there's one of something... Uh, I don't know. 
Would it be possible that you could share your train grid? Uh, yep, it's already on the Discord and also Factorio prints. And there's some links for you. Uh, I actually pinned it on the Blueprints channel in the Discord, although it's quite recently been put there. Cubes go burr. Very good to see. Um, what are these bots doing? Holy moly, that's a lot of blueprints, thanks. You're welcome. Midden, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Do you think it's possible to run this grid type without LTN? Oh, definitely. Um, things that you can't do without LTN uh, make good multi-drop-off stations, I think. Well, maybe you could, but it might not, might not be as good. Uh, and you'd have to have way more trains, because one cargo wagon train can, can carry anything that goes in cargo wagons. Same goes for the fluid wagons. Um, as opposed to needing to have, you know, a specific number of... 25 degree thermofluid trains, negative 10 degree thermofluid trains, negative 100 degree thermofluid trains, negative 275 degree thermofluid trains. I would just merge cells if you need more room. You can do that, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Um... Oh, our spiders are a bit messed up. Alright, back to the mall with you. How's our cryonite slush? That was what we spent a while on. Oh, yeah, it is totally saturated. Uh, it would appear. What about in orbit? Cryonite slush is basically empty here. Um, are we still pumping it? We are. Four per second? Okay, I think we need to be a little bit less strict in how empty this needs to be before we launch. Let's put this down to like... I don't know. We'll try 50. This one is doing just fine. So we've got Crynite Slush here that's totally full that hasn't been picked up. Which indicates that all of these are full. Very good. Very good. Alright, so we can actually make negative 275 degree thermofluid ridiculously quickly whenever we want to. And everything is looking totally saturated. Nice. I have a decently working multi-material station based on simple combinators. Using it to supply defense outposts and stuff like that. It's just not great for high throughput. Yeah. Uh, I, that is something that I've really got down pat this playthrough. Um, earlier on, I was still figuring out uh, how to do certain things with, like, a single cargo wagon, and, uh, once we got, like, making the rope, everything that's in the robot network available to a short wagon, like a, a, a single cargo wagon train, uh, that, that was a really good little milestone. Um, and... I also, you know, figured out a bunch of stuff that I could apply to vanilla as well. I guess for a self-imposed challenge, I could try vanilla trains for the next SE playthrough. I think it would make things significantly more difficult. Or at least less convenient. 
All right. So yeah, that's actually uh, that's actually our resupply for uh, the Foenestra ship done. Since we're just going to use the space that we've already got. Um, I think now would be a good time to take a little break. Definitely need to stretch my legs. We're waiting on some resources to happen. Uh, it's going to be an amount of time before we get any more research done. But then it's going to all happen at once. Uh, what are we waiting on here? Tesseracts. Huh. I think all the tesseracts here are probably getting consumed. Uh, what do tesseracts go into? Yeah, Naquium processes. And we're still making deep supercomputers. Maybe I should stop with that. How many do we have here? One, two, three... And we need, like, I think ex exactly four to finish this build. Uh, where is it? Here. Yeah, we need four. Alright, why don't we... Uh... That's gonna equal to one. We still need... Oh. 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 Okay, we do have the processes here. Um, let's take that yellow spider as an exception again. And we're gonna ask for... four of these. Camille GL, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, I think I'll change this back, actually, to equal zero. We're pretty much just going to keep the minimum of deep supercomputers on hand for now. That is a slow recipe. Max CFM, thank you for the follow as well. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so we can finish our ultimate, I would imagine ultimate, uh, junk data card recycling build. And I might just set things up so that we don't request 42 Naquim processes here. Because that's a lot of stuff sitting idle. LTN's good for changing the schedule of trains. Still can't do that with vanilla. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot... I, I, I haven't thought about it in a long time, but I remember after putting tons of thought into it, uh, thinking if only in vanilla I could have a condition... Like, have a circuit condition that would allow it to skip a stop at the point of the train being at the previous station, uh, then I would be able to set up something very much kind of like LTN. Like, you could have a train with schedules to pick up iron, copper, steel, or stone brick, let's say, uh, and drop-offs for all of those, and you just tell it to skip this or that station. Um... Regardless, uh, yeah, any basically any kind of being able to change the schedule dynamically would open up a lot of possibilities for vanilla. I would like trains. Th I would like that trains had the clamp system, and that you could, with combinators, set a train to go to a yeah, go to a station ID. Yeah, that'd be interesting. That would probably. I mean, I'm pretty sure you could do almost anything with the clamp systems, with the ships. Uh, I think I think if you applied that to trains, the same would probably apply. Yeah, that'd be quite good. 
Could you read the train contents and then command the train to leave if it has contents that don't match the current stop? Yeah, but it would have to go to a bunch of stops that it doesn't need to go to. Still drives to the station, but then leaves. Yep, exactly. Alright, where is our new ship? There it is. Uh, and we need conditions for it to leave, actually. Um, I think... Well, we really need to step up our production. I'm going to take away the deprioritization here. Um, because we really need to step up our production of antimatter canisters. One per two seconds? Uh, would that keep up with this if it was going full speed? It doesn't really tell us. How long does it take to go through an antimatter canister? Hmm, I really don't know. Yeah, hard to say. Alright. Also, how are our antimatter resupplies going? Considering that this is full, uh, that is a pretty... Oh, it's almost full. That's a pretty good sign. Uh, where are we dropping the antimatter? Here we go. So this thing's like less than half full right now. Uh, I should pr probably crank up the priority on this a little bit. What about down on Elvis? Not a whole lot of antimatter stream here. Antimatter tanker number two is waiting to pick up from Nalvis orbit. Uh, so still not great, it would appear. Uh, I see a ton of ships in motion, though, bringing Naquitite. So we're definitely doing better. Okay, yeah, our ingot production. Um, our ingot production has been mostly solid. There were, like, 15 minutes where it stopped. Wait, do we actually need another block to make antimatter stream? No, I wouldn't think so. I, I wouldn't think this would be that full if that was the case. Hmm. Antimatter stream output is actually completely full here. So, what's going on? How fast are we making it? 600 per second per block, so it's not like we should need another or a bigger output station. We can pump it at 1200 per second through here, so that's definitely not the issue. Is it just taking that long to resaturate our system? That might be it. Yeah, I think that might actually be it. Accepting zero trains is different. The train will just stand still and wait for an open slot. A disabled station is skipped. A disabled station is skipped, but disabling stations can cause trains to just stop dead in their tracks under certain circumstances. You actually kind of need like a fake station with that name somewhere that's unreachable. T-Hacks, can you add a strip? Oh, unreachable, but you can path to it. It has to be behind a signal that's, like, always red. Can you add a strip of lights below sphere balancer? Brain to show which recipe is lowest. Oh, sure. Um, so I guess... 
Just some lights down here. And we'll do... Oh, we need spiders. Uh, I forgot I put the spiders over there. I think we built a few more deep supercomputers here than we needed. But bear in mind, the factory is basically stopped for a lot of things right now. Um, because we're bottlenecked on the on the deep space science. All of the other sciences have caught up. Alright, so that's not going to step over any spaceships. That's true if you have multiple stops in schedule. Never had that happen for me, but I also have all my pickup stations set to a train limit based on available materials. So there should never be a train on the way if I disable it. I see. Okay. Um, yeah, I am curious if I go back to vanilla trains, how much of what I've learned this playthrough I can take into that and improve things. Quite happy with that little unloader. Alright, let's get these lights placed and then I think I'll take a break. I'll set up some words on string. It's actually been three and a half hours, it's a bit overdue. If a station gets disabled with a train en route to it, the train will just stop, so setting train limits is definitely preferable. Yeah, if there isn't another station with that of that name that's enabled, I think is the condition where that happens. Um, although it's been a while. I could also... I could put lights next to all of these right here to show which ones it wants to do. Ah, eh, it's fine. We can kind of see if that recipe is active by the spinning, unless there's a resource shortage, which there definitely shouldn't be. Oh yeah, I haven't decided. I haven't decided on how full this should be before it leaves. I would prefer to just completely saturate it, to be honest. It is going to take a while though. Each of these represents a thousand antimatter stream. So... Two stacks is an entire train load of antimatter. That is a lot. Um, so what, 20? 20 train loads of antimatter stream can be picked up by a short train with a cargo wagon. If it's in canisters. That is some compression, it sure is. Silent Storm, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. And here comes some more antimatter stream. We gotta squish that cat, I mean antimatter. Alright, so this is gonna be... I guess I can't copy paste the wires, it's gonna mess these up. It's just gonna be anything greater than zero. And we're just going to get red wire so that we only get the output from the combinator above it. So there it is. Currently we're only trying to do this inversion recipe. 
That's kind of useful actually, because now we know it's not like we're trying to do this one, but we're missing inputs without pointing at or clicking on all of these. The only thing I don't like is how we end up with zero of this or that arcosphere. Um, and then it thinks it's perfectly average. That might actually really throw things off. I think I will add a constant here. Or is it just here? Hmm. We could pretend we have one more of each arcosphere. Or one less. Uh, probably, probably one more, I guess. Just because when we do math with each, it sort of doesn't understand a zero value. As far as this average calculation is concerned. All right, so now it understands that four of these are way below average. And it still only wants to do inversion. That's interesting. If some will be negative one, then your fix won't work. Uh, what do you mean by that? If some will be negative one. I mean, judging by the change in the display, uh, I would think it's working. So, gamma is way below average. We have no gammas. Gamma is not listed here. It's negative one. Your fix adds one, so it's zero. And it's invisible. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But that's going to happen way less often. And if it's only negative one, it's fine. Um, but if we're actually at zero for an arcosphere, and it thinks it's at the average, then we're actually off by, for example, eight. And more importantly, we don't have any of those arcospheres to use or to fold or invert. Um, so that off by one is way less of a problem than being off by whatever the average is. Uh, and, and critically having zero, or approximately zero, of whichever arcosphere available. Yeah, I think this is fine. Alright, uh, let's get started with some words on the stream. And I'm going to take a break, stretch my legs and such. Be back in a few minutes. And words on stream will start in about 30 seconds. Good luck and have fun. Whoops, I started too quickly.
Okay. Good to go. Fantastic. Let's continue with space exploration. And hopefully we got a burst of resources. Um, somehow I doubt it. I mean, that's still a good amount of... Why don't I just launch it if ice is full or if antimatter canister is full? Um, so we're going to say, we're, and we're just going to assume we have enough uranium fuel cells. Uh, so if, let's see, I, I can do this in one combinator plus constant. The four things that could be here, oh, magnetic canisters are not getting taken away. Uh, why is that? Are we requesting? Magnetic canisters here? That doesn't sound right. Magnetic canister. Um, let's see if I can find it. I see antimatter canister. Oh, we're looking at what's in here, not what's in the robot network. Okay. Um, why don't we just also bring uh, empty canisters here? Easy. Okay. So we're going to assume that those canisters have been taken away and that we've got enough uranium fuel cells. Um, we're going to look for 9.6k antimatter, I mean ice. Uh, and... What are we looking for? 2k antimatter stream? And then I would say if anything greater than or equal to zero, but then we're going to be getting these other signals. Uh, that is water, uranium, uranium. So we're going to ignore those. Water, uranium, uranium, uh, and also canister. And I think that accounts for everything that could be on this green wire. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that should be it. So then if we... If we say anything greater than or equal to zero, output launch, uh, it should be wanting to launch because we've, we're full of ice. And our destination is Foenestra, which is just Anomaly 1. T-hacks above is fixed for landing pad? Wait, what did you do? Input is content of landing pad and output is connected to inserter. Which output spheres for general usage? Uh, okay. Hold on. Foenestra 1. Wait, you're not trying to launch without a destination, surely. Uh, where did it go? Foenestra resupply. Alright, so we did give it the Foenestra destination in time. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Indeed. 
Um, it also did occur to me that we could... Um, if we wanted this to be perfectly precise and accomplish the same thing, we could have a bunch of decider combinators. Um, we need eight decider combinators. And we would say, if, uh, let's say, arcosphere lambda equals zero, then output some other signal that could stand in for arcosphere lambda. Um, and then we would get... Well, the average would be calculated correctly anyway, but then... Yeah, no, that's it. Oh, except these are doing each to the power of two, so that would actually mess things up. Never mind. But we would have to, like, take... We would have to subtract that from each of these as well. Nah, it'd be pretty messy. You could do it, though, I think. Okay. Just add those two combinators from my blueprint pasted above in chat. Alright, let's see. So what do these do? Each less than or equal to 6, output 1 each. Each times negative 1,000. Output negative 1,000 of anything less than or equal to 6. So we just... We just consider something dropping below 6 as like an emergency. So we're going to pretend there's negative a thousand-ish epsilons right now, for example. Isn't that going to throw off the average, or are we putting it somewhere else? That goes to those combinators on right side of landing pad. Oh, uh, these ones? Or not the display? Combinators on right side of landing pad. So anything that's less than... Wait, what? Oh, so we don't want to output this if we're low on it. Is, is that what you're saying? Input is... Landing pad content. And if anything less than 6, it won't pick it up. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure... I don't know if that's that important because like the whole point of the exercise is that we've got these available for there's actually only six types here hmm okay yeah that might be a good idea we could also is that the way to do it with the least combinators Probably. Yeah, I do wish, like, the decider combinators, uh, instead of just output one or input count, you could just output times a constant. Um, I really don't like having to do an arithmetic combinator, just, like, a whole extra combinator just for that. Um, but I think you're right. I think it probably doesn't get better than that. What is that? Don't flatten the spider. <laughs> spider hacks and his flat friends. <laughs> hey, Evil Plow. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. You can't allow for spheres to be used faster than you can balance them. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it has been working so far, but... Obviously, it could be better. Mm. I just don't like having to add that many combinators. 
All right, we can cram them in here, I guess. Also, the wiring is going to look, I guess, not that bad. Decided Combinator, Arithmetic Combinator. And we need to bring our spiders over to make this happen. Alright, we still need more ice. Could always divide... Uh, divide the comparison. Also, Regathi, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Divide the comparison value instead of multiplying by a constant. Divide the comparison value. Well, yeah, you'd still need just as many combinators, right? But we need the output to be a large negative number um, to get to take it off the whitelist. Well, it needs to be larger than five anyway. Actually. No. Yeah, no, I think I can do this with uh, just a decider and a constant. Uh, we can have a constant with, like, negative a thousand of each. For example, something arbitrary like that. And then... Uh, if anything is less than negative 995, then output input count. So we can, we can save like half a combinator. Oh, one less combinator that uses power, and it's probably, I guess, more UPS friendly. Sometimes you have to compare, have less comparison values. Yep. Uh, where are our spiders? I do kind of like this ship, though. I think I want to jump into Sandbox to design an endgame ship, um, because that's going to be a lot of testing. Not to mention getting a lot of resources together and stuff. Um, I did briefly think I wanted to check this. So if we're taking off if ice is full... What if we, like, practically never get antimatter canisters? We keep filling up with ice, coming back here, and then we take off as soon as either of these are empty. So then there's no antimatter canisters. We leave, we go back, we get ice. We come back, there's no antimatter canisters, we leave. Yeah, this could do a... this could do a loop. If we don't have enough antimatter canisters, it could just keep going around in circles. Um, maybe we should make sure that at least one of these, maybe we should make sure there's at least some of both. Know if I can do that without more combinators. Alright, so we're gonna go Arcosphere negative one K. For each. And then uh, this goes straight to here. This is on a red wire because we don't want it to affect this value. And then probably doesn't matter if we go green or red here, but I'm going to go red just so that it's not 
interfering with any of this. Uh, so, if we have only 5 of something, we get a value of negative 995. So, for each less than or equal to, I don't know, negative 995, output each input count. So now we're not trying to pick up theta, C. Oh, theta's fine now. But we've already got five in here. Yeah, so the ones that are actually at negative 1k were missing completely. And there has to be five of something here before we put it into this chest. Oh. I could put this up here, but it's not going to look any less jumbled. That reactor to power the ring? Yes, indeed. Uh, it gives us 11 gigawatts. Um, we've got neighbor bonus. Well, we don't have it right now because there's no fuel in, but uh, triple neighbor bonus on these ones and double neighbor bonus on the outside. Uh, so 1200 megawatts times 4. 4.8 gigawatts. Uh, plus 800, 1600, 3200 is 8 gigawatts. Do the condenser turbines really do that much work? Hmm, that doesn't sound right. Might be a bit small. No, it's fine. Uh, you can see it right here. Well, there's the ship as well, but uh, this thing can do 11 consistently. It can go a bit above 11 temporarily, but the longer it's been running... The, the longer it's been running at or below capacity, the longer it will be able to run above capacity before something happens. Um, but we currently don't have quite enough water to run it properly. In fact, where is our water? Oh, it's all in here as steam right now. Okay. So there's our ice. Quite a lot of it, actually. We still got 8.4k ice in here. And a bunch of antimatter canisters. Antimatter canister signal on this is 35. Once it reaches negative 100. So once these are taken, then the ship will launch. Also, did we actually fill this? No. It's still requesting all of these antimatter canisters. I am quite interested in the fact that it seems consistent that the bots don't take any antimatter canisters from up here to bring down here. We detect the antimatter canisters in the ship and request exactly that to this chest, and it seems like the bots will go out of their way to take from the nearest source to put it in here, which is actually great. Wouldn't it be easier to beam energy there? Yes and no. I would have to beam an absurd amount of energy. Um, because it comes through at an efficiency of 0.34%. Uh, and we need 10 gigawatts to run this thing. So I, I bit the bullet and built a reactor. That was my original plan. Uh, I even considered keeping the energy beam reactor here as like a backup. But... The amount of time or energy or both um, that it takes to just heat 
the receiver, and considering this is 10 gigawatts, the little amount of time that it would run for, um, I just didn't bother. Um, that's actually a lot of bot activity. I didn't mean for uh, to have more than 50 bots here either. I mean, this is a ton of ice. It's going to last. Baguette. Delicious. Alright, so... It also does take some time... Uh, for the ice machines to do that thing. This is obviously way faster than... fast enough to keep up with maintenance, but... to get started we might go a little bit faster. I want these tanks about half full when we've got all of our steam saturated. I'm actually curious, can we run this thing without the power crashing already at the rate we're adding more water? Wait, how can production be at 10 gigawatts? It should be 11 point something. Well, it's on. It's just a question of if we end up starved for water before it can maintain itself. Yeah, I think we need more water. How do I actually push this button, even? Uh, I don't think there's a signal that we could feed it. Is it not? Oh, there, there's our connection point. Okay, uh, I don't see any, like, left or right type signals. Hmm. I, I don't think we're going to be needing the crafting combinator recipe signals either. Hmm. Not sure. Um, but I am surprised that power seems to be okay for the moment. In fact, yeah, it's caught up. There's still water in here. Although I thought... Oh, this is disconnected, that's why. Okay, yeah, so the only power consumer is the ring and some inserters and stuff. Alright then. Um... What do... Try one or zero? What is that giant ring? Good question. Emo, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, how about red signal? Green signal? Blue signal. Uh, we don't actually have a way to give it signals for... Oh, it just ran out of power, didn't it? Yep. 
Yeah, we need more water. Actually, water seems fine. We ran out of heat? But we have steam. What? Hold on. This is enabled. Steam less than 20k. Read... Read hand contents pulse. Uh, what? Oh, I, I know what happened. It's because of this thing that I did temporarily a while ago. Alright, canister... go. That makes sense. Alright, let's turn this thing back on before we waste some of that fuel. Use the inputs in the... that or that on the gate itself. Uh, no, I don't think I can connect to that. Like, I've tried left-click, right-click on these. Uh... I'll turn this off. Turn this one off? Why do we have 8 gigawatts? 6 gigawatts? What? 2 gigawatts? What is going on? We tested the hell out of this. We've got greater than 5,000 degrees reaching the ends of all of these. We've got water everywhere. I don't understand. We've even got steam that's accumulated. What about the 500 degree steam? Don't tell me it's not using up some of the 500 degree steam. And it's blocking it. We've got more than enough condenser turbines. It's not the water output. No, definitely not. Five hundred degree steam seems to be the problem. But that should be getting like we've got way better than a good enough ratio to turn all of the five hundred degree steam into water. It's like two point five ish condenser turbines per high temp turbine generator. And even though we've got a larger number, we've, we've got that 1 to 3 ratio. Max steam output 500 degrees, 215 per second. And this consumes 80 per second. 160, 240. So, what's happening? It said press, press R to push. Oh, did it. Press R to push. There we go. Thank you. Um, I'm a little concerned about our power at this stage, though. It does look like condenser turbines aren't keeping up unless you're not using all the output. I mean, we have to be using all the output. It's... I don't know. Alright, let's try playing with this. Oh... And I guess it just doesn't stop until... 
Okay, I see. Um, so I'm going to guess that whatever's here is going to be our destination. Uh, apparently we're missing an anchor, thermofluid, and, I don't know, a target? So, was there a mysterious structure in, in, there's one in Mariel. There's multiple mysterious structures per solar system. I can't actually go and look remotely at the structures from here, right? I think we trimmed... Oh no, here it is. But yeah, it's not like I can go in with the nav set. Um... Do I have it saved for any of our local ones? Via Terra, let's see. Doesn't seem like I do. Uh, because what I want to do is take the anchor that we've got at Calidus. Put it down. Uh, I hope we've got enough power. Sixty-seven gigawatts. Yep, we're fine. Time to call John Shepherd. All right. Um, it's still doing the thing where it doesn't seem to be doing anything. But we've got enough power to support this. What I want to do is select one of... Oh! Hello, anchor signal. Um... Is this, like, the maximum number of anchors we can use as eight? Or do I have to line this up with the star system that the anchor is in? Uh, I don't see it... I don't see it changing. I don't know if it would change while it's in motion or not. Can I do this remotely? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, how's our power? It seems to have stabilized. I hope. Alright, we've got tons of ice now. Hopefully tons of antimatter to run this thing. Uh... I don't want to have to go there in person, but I really do need to see what the glyphs look like at Mariel, for instance. Um, I just don't think I recorded any of these until I went into Stella. Didn't you screenshot each pyramid? Yeah, outside of the solar system. So I need to go back... I wonder... This doesn't give us an output signal. Can we connect to anything else? I mean, I know we can connect to this. We're also going to have to arrange for thermofluid. Um, I think I'll make another tanker for that. In fact, why don't we just copy the antimatter tanker design? 
Um, I think we still have one slot free here. Uh, so we'll use this, but with different fluids. I'm guessing it wants negative 273 degree thermofluid. Um, guessing. And it's probably going to output 25 degree thermofluid. We could probably accomplish that with one tanker. Um, it'll be a bit awkward or tricky. We could do like one fluid on one side, one fluid on the other side. But then... I think we should just do two tankers. I was going to say I could reclaim this, but I don't want to. Yeah, we might have to make another block. Alright, we're going back to our home uh, Homestar. And I'm going to get in my little shuttle. And we're going to record uh, which glyphs relate to our star system. Is that the bloody Ori Stargate? Yes, something like that, I guess, probably. Tumbling Satellite, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. We got one of these bars to go green, so that's something. I wonder if we can just use either or um, fluid input output here. What is this? Fluid input, fluid output. There we go. We could actually put it up on the sides if we want to. Yeah, I'm going to take a wild guess and say that we don't need to connect to all of these. Alright, what's our EPA back to now for Sorbit? Five minutes. I guess that would be incorrect. That guess would be incorrect. Wait, no. Surely not. That would just be slightly inconvenient. Uh, I guess I could just take this uh, construction ship. What's the stress on this thing? 748. We'd use a lot less fuel. Well, significantly less fuel with this thing. It's also faster. Wouldn't surprise me if you just input water into it. Uh, I seriously doubt it, especially because... It's got the same, like, icon. Whoops. It's got the same icon here with the little thermometer thing as our thermofluid. So I, I, I doubt it's just water. I mean, we could try it. We do have the ice right here. Uh, but yeah, I think I think we'll conserve our energy for now. Um, so what's taking so long on the Naquitite, I wonder? There's nothing in motion here. That's fine. That train right there. Don't tell me it's still antimatter stream. It's still antimatter stream. Uh, what are we missing here? The outputs are full. Oh, 
How much are we requesting here? 200k. Wait, there's antimatter stream here right now. Are we literally just not... Is this our bottleneck? Antimatter stream? I thought it was a... Tyrannosaurus hack stream. Indeed. Conserving his energy is good. The universe and thermodynamics approve. Yes. Oh, I thought there was another ship coming to replace that. Uh, anti tanker. This one is... What is this one doing? It's not... In get, or how long has it been there? Well, I'm glad we came to check on it just now. I'm feeling punny today, indeed. Uh, yeah, I don't know how necessary it is that we either reduce the threshold. But it's already relatively low. It needs to be 98% full in this container before it launches. Uh, at first we're pumping 1600 per second. And now we're down to 1400. That's on both sides. Maybe I should have another antimatter. Um, yeah, let's make another one of these blocks. There's two things. Well, I'm pretty sure there's two things. No, there's definitely two things that we need. Um, another block like this for. We need at least one more of these to get our antimatter stream down to Nalvis. Or at least I suspect we do. This tanker hasn't been moving for ages. But yeah, I'm pretty sure this is bottlenecking. Um, and we also... I could... actually... I could actually speed this up a bit. Right here. We're gonna add... Fluid containers, like so. And I guess this is fine as well. And we're just going to have one pump to pick up from the middle section. Uh, and that way we can summon four trains at a time to come over here. Uh, also, this should be a bit greater, a, a bit bigger of a, of a request than 400k. Um, we can fit, let's see, uh, 14 times, well no, these ones don't count. Um... 800 plus 700 plus 8. You need 1600. Uh, plus 1000 plus 1200. 2800. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Plus 1600, roughly. Let's say we can go 3000 over having 400k in these tanks. Um, 403,000. Train limit 4. Request threshold 100k. Alright, where are our spiders? They've actually got a ways to go yet. Could rotate the tanks to support two pumps. Or three pumps, yes. What type of container do you store bad jokes in? A punnet. I actually don't know what a punnet is. 
pungent. A small box or square basket for gathering, transport, and sale of fruit and vegetables. Okay. Strawberries pun it, I see. Okay. Uh, and over here we're gonna put... Uh, where is our spaceships? I think uh, something a bit like this. Uh, it's except it's going to be a bit more. Shaped for our antimatter ships. I wonder if I could. not how that works. Okay. What do you call an expert on bad jokes? I punned it. Oh no. Uh, why don't I just copy the antimatter stream tanker specifically? Wait, no. We've already got two tankers, I think. It'll be fine if we just... Oh. Uh, so this goes here. That should be fine. Or maybe I should have had it slightly closer. I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. We'll have the negative 275 degree thermofluid picked up here. Maybe I should test which thermofluid goes in before I bring 800,000 of it. Also, now that I think about it, uh, these shuttles only have to go between Nalvis and Nalvis orbit. Um, so it's possible that with the antimatter one, it doesn't reach its top speed. No, I'm sure it does reach its top speed. Pretty. It's, mm, it's only 388 hull stress. Hmm. Four lasers, one engine. Oh. Oh, there's the minor issue of power. I forgot again. <laughs> okay. Well, we're still doing this. Um, so that's fine. So it's more accurate to say I realized in time. Also, did we finish this part? Not quite. Yeah, uh, let's not... Let's not try and send this thing to Foenestro with just solar panels. Um, so I might... I don't know. I think we'll just have to sacrifice some capacity here. for the power plant. Or we could build a new tanker from scratch, but I don't know how different it's going to be. Let's just say this is going to be about the limit of how big it's going to get. Uh, so antimatter stream still goes here. Wait. The only one, the only tanker that we've got that uses antimatter stream uh, uses all of it. Yeah, we don't have to constrain ourselves to fitting in this stuff that we've already got. Um, 
not too strictly anyway. Let's just put this here so we don't commit to our fluids. Um, I'll grab the blueprint for... for the tanker shuttle, just for a, something to start from. Maybe. I like when T-Hex says, now when I'm thinking about it, it means there will be one more week guaranteed streams. <laughs> yep. Redesign, redesign, redesign. Disassemble it at the other end and shoot the parts back. Uh, I don't think we can do that. Where are our bots? Here they come. It almost feels weird not to be spamming out new ships anymore. Kind of like it. And that's us. Okay. So ideally, this would fit pretty well in our existing blocks. Uh, I think I'll do double antimatter engine at the back here. Get the spiders to finish what they started. Alright. Let's start with this. We're not using liquid rocket fuel. Uh, we do need a separate bunch of containers from antimatter stream. How would this fit over here? We'll probably have to like move the the big long pipe that was going to be like here, but that's fine. Actually, I should compare it to this. That, yeah, that doesn't even... That, that doesn't even intrude on this design. Let's see if we can make it work. I kind of like the look of that as well. Uh, although the input for this fluid is definitely going to have to change if we do that. Or I could put the engines further back. We would need some other... We can't actually underground pipe past this, but I'm sure we can get around it somehow. There's plenty of room. Um, in that case... More floor. We actually just need to move it back a couple of tiles. If this were to go here and here, it wouldn't connect with these two. And here as well would be good. One, two. One, two. Two, three, and four. And I guess this would go here. Or well, you remove one to two tanks and replace them with the antimatter container. Yeah. I like this so far. Um, what have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight train loads. 
uh, 800k. That's the exact same as our other... Oh, wait, we need a power plant. Yeah, minor detail. Uh, so that's... I'm sure that's way more than enough antimatter stream. Um, we did a good job miniaturizing our power plant on the other ship. So maybe we should steal from that. Bonus row resupply. And I might just get rid of the stuff that's unrelated to power here. Oops. Uh, maybe I'll, maybe I will put the spaceship console there again. Let's see. This has to be here. How many? F we would need to get water in the middle there. Uh. Well, let's tentatively pretend we're going to do that. We could definitely get away with this much. These two would... These four would be a problem. And... We actually could get the pipe out here. Um, if I move it over one tile, then that's going to connect. Oh, this doesn't have to look like this. So that could go there, which means all of this could move over one tile. We don't really gain anything from it, but um, I think I would prefer the look of it. Wait, what? Oh, I see. One off, indeed. Well, you removed one to two tanks and replaced them with... Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Um, that actually reaches without another piece of pipe. Or I could put, like, a 3B here, for example. Um, are we sure one of these is going to be enough? Also... Oh, the other design was one tile wider and one tile less tall. That might actually be perfect for this. Uh, I don't... We still have it. I mean, I could have found it somewhere else, but still. Um, let's just put that there for a second. And then... It wouldn't fit here or here. It would fit here or here. Okay. And then we're obviously not going to worry about the solar panels. Uh, this goes here. I might move the reactor just a little bit. And we can... We don't really need the, uh, like, doors or anything. And we could maybe save a tile up here if we want to. Um, could I move all of this up? I think so. I can't move it up more to put more tanks in the bottom. I don't know if we'd get any more tanks, but we'd save a bit of space and stuff. Uh, also, that bit of wall is actually going to have to stay. Wait a sec. 
I, I didn't want to move this down a tile. That doesn't really change anything over here. It was the back that was a bit cramped. Hmm. Let's just copy paste this over here. Uh, it still fits, technically, <laughs> in one of these old blocks. Uh, it's looking a bit awkward with the engines covering, like, the liquid rocket fuel, for example. But... It's not that big a deal. Uh, actually, I think in this block we don't want to bring any liquid rocket fuel at all. So, yeah, it's probably good that we got this started up here. Yeah, we don't have to follow any of these conventions, really. Though it might be somewhat convenient. We should probably look at pumping... Uh, pumping stuff in from more than a couple of little bottlenecks. Like... We can put this here, and this goes here, and maybe even... Like this as well. I don't think that would make a difference. It would actually just... be bottlenecked through this part. That could work. But I do like my symmetry. Okay, so water input here. Uh, we definitely need to measure one of the tanks of water at least. Uh, we need to measure one of the tanks for, like, the main input. I think this is pretty much it. Uh, we've, I didn't even think about this as well, but we do just have just the right spot. Uh, just the right amount of room right here to do the... Input output for the fuel for the nuclear reactor. Also, I would really like it if if we didn't have to have this here. If this could go here, but I don't see how we're going to get the water in if we do that. And it doesn't make any practical difference. So I guess we'll just keep that little gap. Yeah, I think this is pretty close to the final product. Um, should we start putting some antimatter stream into it? I don't think I'm going to scrap this part. Don't forget to fuel input for the reactor, indeed. Uranium fuel cell. Just a couple of stacks of that. And... I think just the one accumulator... Is, actually, why don't we put another couple in? We can use it for the speed signal. Who knows how fast this thing's going to go. Greetings, Night Dancer. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Also, Abby and Light and Dardanome, if I didn't say. 
Welcome, welcome, also. Alright, so we are going to enable this when we detect a used up uranium fuel cell. We're going to read that from this inserter. We're going to put only one fuel cell in when we need one. And this is going to be activated when speed signal is less than 99% from the accumulators. Uh, our clamp ID, let's go for... Uh, fluid ID 29. I have a feeling 29 is taken, but only, only if we're going to Nalvis. Which we're not. But there's, there's definitely a 29 in Nalvis orbit. So let's not, even though I'm sure it wouldn't fit there. The small ship would fit over here, though. Uh, what number would, should we use for this? This is for... Well, probably negative 273 degree thermofluid. Um, didn't we need, like... Oh, it was antimatter stream that we needed a bunch of stuff that was very inconvenient uh, to pump to unload the canisters. But can we barrel? Actually, yeah, we can barrel thermo fluid, right? Or is it only? It's only warm thermo fluid. Okay, so I am going to actually have to take the thermofluid over there in a ship to test if this is the thermofluid that we need. Four lasers is enough for a ship this wide. It depends how fast it goes. Sheep same it. Lawful eagle. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, okay, so... Yeah, we'll soon find out. We could just take it on a little joyride before we put any... Um, any of our product in it. Can't you heat up the thermofluid when you get there? That is... Or cool it down, rather. Yeah, that is a good point. Um would be a little bit of a nuisance, but we could do it. And that would mean that if, as long as we take one of these and two of these, uh, we can use whatever type of thermofluid. Also, now that I think about it, um, we should probably just set up Oh, where am I going? Foe and Estra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should definitely set up uh, thermofluid recycling here so that it only needs the occasional supply. It's just going to lose a little bit of thermofluid uh, when we cool it down again. Okay. In that case, in that case, we could definitely bring 25 degree thermofluid. Yeah, if we're going to set up, uh, if we're going to set up processing for the thermofluid over there anyway, then we're effectively bringing every temperature of thermofluid if we bring 25. Yeah, I think I don't mind spending a bit of energy over there um, to do this. We'll see what kind of throughput it has. Maybe we'll change our plan. Going to solve the ring? Yep, we're working on it. How far did we get on the ring? Uh, Well, we've got power to it. 
Oh, 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 before I forget, uh, let's go... I, I can work on this thing remotely. Let's get in our player ship. And we've got some screenshots to take. First, we are going to Mariel. Actually, what's the closest mysterious structure? I think none of the moons will have it, right? Mariel counts as a planet, even though it's only radius 2000. Yeah, so we don't have to stop there. Via Terra. Lothar. Uh, Quillian? I don't think I've been to Quillian. Penium. So pretty much li literally every planet except for Nalvis. Um, that's like on the right here. The one that the moons orbit. Has a mysterious structure. And I haven't yet screenshot any of them. There are 64 symbols. I counted 60 planets with pyramids. Hmm. I wonder what's with the other four. Okay. Uh, I guess this isn't quite inside the robot network. So we definitely need water here. Uh, that might be slightly tricky. It's fine. Oh, we definitely need a clamp so that we don't overfill the water. Well, actually, I could have just... Uh, whatever, it's fine. Alright, pipe goes here. 15 goes here. Calculated. Actually, we need a pump. Not calculated. And this goes here. Water, less than 24,500 in one of the tanks. That should be fine. Uh, we also need to put in just a little bit of fuel to get this thing started. Uh, I guess our target speed is 300 if this is all charged. So once this is warmed up, we can take it for a little test drive. 13 seconds till we're at Mariel. Uh, the only planet... There's Penium and Quillian, I think, are the only planets left with biters on them in our system. Oh, also Lothar. But we didn't have to clear them on Lothar because we had this island with no biters. Very lucky. Okay. Ariel. Anchor. Where is that? Oh, I see. Okay. I wonder what that bot will do if I go to another surface right now. Let's not find out. Alright, so this is Mariel. It's like a 
upward pointing arrow thing. Let's grab a screenshot. And on to Via Terra. Headed stick figure? Oh no. Alright, let me just grab a snip of this. Save as Maria. Dot JPEG. That is going straight into the Discord. Whoops. Hurry up. Alright, can we find... Uh, I guess I have to power it up first. Can we find Mariel on this? Oh, no, wait, that's... Oh, there it is, there it is, I think. Very lucky. Alright, let's move this thing... Uh, this way. And stop. And left, and stop. No, 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 stop, 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 stop. Uh, right, rather. Alright. And then? And then... who knows? Um, I wonder what the significance is, though, of... Each of these having a certain glyph visible here. That thing is so darn cool looking. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I don't know if that's uh, helping us. Alright, let's go back to our little thermo fluid tanker. Uh, I kind of, I think I want to be on it when we take it for a spin, because there does seem to be a decent chance that it'll break. I could just limit its speed. We can rescue it easily enough. Let's send it to, let's say, just Calidus Asteroid Belt 2 for a second. Actually, yeah, no, I'm sure if it got stuck on its way to Foenestra, we'd still just have to input the ship's name as a destination. Well, it is Asteroid Belt 2. This is fairly few symbols. You could just test all of them. Seems like you can press R on the thingies around the rings as well. Uh, let me have a look. Let's do this first. The thingies around. Press R to... oh. To move manually. Huh. Last user, me. Okay. Who knows? Let's check on our ship. Cartographer. What's our speed? A hundred? A 
100 with a hull stress of less than 500. Oh. Oh, it's bottlenecked on power. Wait, really? Hold on. Why? Because we're not at 500 degrees yet. It's just running off accumulators. Alright, there it goes. Dope. Indeed. Uh, this might actually be good enough. Yeah, with the whole stress that we've got... Well, no, I'm not sure why... Yeah, we're bottlenecked on power. Which is a bit surprising because... Uh, Foenestra resupply was not. And it's got a shield projector on it. Two engines. One condenser turbine. Uh, five lasers and a shield projector. And it's actually really, really well balanced. Hmm. Am I missing something here? I mean, the hull stress is only 234, but shouldn't that not matter for power? Max consumption of these is 1 megawatt each regardless. Uh, engine consumption, 2.1 megawatts. So what's going on with our new ship. Engine consumption is quite low by comparison because because our accumulator charge isn't climbing. We have the same... Is it because there's too much water still? I think it might be no, I don't think it's getting blocked by the water. So we have fewer lasers, the same number of engines, no shield. The only thing that's different is the, the hull stress. But that shouldn't actually matter? Less accumulators? Uh, that's true, but we're not we're not accumulating power, like our target speed is low which means these are consuming less power it should be even less of a problem Maybe they don't charge fast enough. That is actually an interesting thought. Max input 500 kilowatts each. That's 1500 kilowatts. Uh, versus... Five times that, I think. Oh, wow. No. That's... Wait, yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2.5 megawatts max input, that's 2,500. So this is like 15 Holmium accumulators. We're able to input 7.5 megawatts uh, into the accumulators. Which is like... all of... It's more than the condenser turbine can produce. Whereas... For the cartographer, so-called... Um, 1.5 megawatts, that's a... That's a fraction of our 5.82 maximum. 
And because we're basing our power on our accumulators, yeah, we are actually bottlenecked on the accumulators. Huh. That's so different. Good catch. Who was that? Yeah, Whiskers. Really good catch. Oh wait, not Whiskers. Oh, was it Whiskers? Seems like the usual... I think... I keep scrolling to that spot. Power... The other one had neck accumulators. Yeah, yeah. Kuchen, Kuchen. Uh, really good catch. Also, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Glastiger? Are there more aliens with this mod? Alien spaceships? Uh... Like, different species of biters or something? Uh, no. There's some spaceships left behind, but not, like, other factions or something. The Oddities of Power? Yeah, I mean, it has different bottlenecks. Uh, it's, it's shaped pretty different from other things. Alright, let's send this thing back to Nalvis Orbit. And we'll give it some Naquim Accumulators. And I'm thinking our lead spider probably already has those. Uh, let's see. Five Naquim Accumulators. Okay, cool. We'll come back to this build. We'll definitely wait until we've finalized what this ship is going to look like before we build this stuff out. Should probably just remove some more of this floor. Alright, let's anchor on Via Terra. We've already cleared this one out as well. Screenshot. Whoops. 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 Uh, where are we going next? Lothar. Zugzug. -zug. Better check fuel. Yeah, we're, we're good. I might have to refuel before landing on Penium, or maybe even Quillian. Probably Pentium. Alright, let's get our shot for Lothar. Throw that into the Discord. And it's kind of like a, almost like a hand or something. Alright, where's our new ship? Probably a little bit further away than I would like. There it is. ETA. Two and a half minutes. I could force it to go faster. I'm actually curious as to what its top speed is. There is a small chance that we'll have to rescue it. But I'm thinking with this size and just two engines, the four lasers are probably going to be able to keep up. Especially because it's not big enough to cause really big asteroids to spawn. Oh, 
Oh, it did actually reach its top speed earlier by the look of it. Or something close to it. Yeah, with the Holmium accumulators, it actually slows down when it fires its lasers, whether we want it, whether we tell it to or not. Oh, oh, that, that was a little closer than expected. We could do more laser research. ETA, 25 seconds. Alright, cool. Where are we now? 32 seconds from Lothar? Is there also something to see in the black ball above the inscription? The black ball. Uh, what inscription? Oh, the, uh, that's a container. Yeah, you get a free, um, tier 9 module. Uh, when you visit those places. Sander, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. One entity is destroyed, spaceship wall. Ten entities are being damaged. I think I can guess which spaceship that was. No? It's still moving. Oh. Yeah, it's still slowing down. Okay. Alright, we'll rescue it on the way back. Um, I could just... <laughs> King Fnub, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I could just keep it as is and put a speed cap on it. I, I really don't think it's going to have to make the trip very often. It's got... Um... It's bringing thermofluid. And we're going to cycle that, like, we lose, like, 1% of it or less, depending on which recipe we use, to put it to negative 10 degrees. Alright, Lotha up here. Yeah, was this the black circle thing you were referring to? Uh, it is a ancient container, and no, you can't take it with you. All right, let's grab this. Check our fuel. Actually, no, I'm sure we're going to get to Quillian at least. Quillian. I will check our fuel though. Yeah, it's fine. Alright, let's do the screenshot thing. And... Save as... what was the planet? Lothar. Wait. Did I already do Lothar? What? Did I... Did I name the other one Lothar by mistake? I think I did. O okay, let's let's fix that. So just to be clear, we just left Lothar, and I think via Terra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't do via Terra yet. All right. I mean, I I did do it. I just named it wrong. Yeah. Right, cool. Save as Lothar. Fantastic. I couldn't land my personal shuttle ship on Nalvis the other day. There's this spot when I try to land it says I can't land. Obstacle in the way. Unknown key. Jetpack sound. Oh no. So it's leaking entities like... Uh, like the crafting combinator blueprint settings, except you don't have a way to remove it. 
There's also balls like that on the rig. Uh, yeah, I think that's a little bit of sort of recycled slash artistic style kind of. This is like the alien aesthetic. Although there's like a mis mixture of, well, I guess we know someone else has, some other humans have been here before. Uh, but there's like already this mixture of alien technology aesthetic and human junk added to it. The blinked red X always makes me so nervous. <laughs> From the uh, destruction of the old stuff. Uh, not the old stuff, but like the uh, voiding of stuff that we don't need. Midden, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. That's a lot of ships in motion. I love to see it. Uh, that is not much antimatter stream here. I don't love to see that, but I'm pretty sure we're getting there. Pretty sure we're getting there. Um, I don't have a way to rescue that ship until I go back there personally. It's just not possible. But yeah, I think, um, I have tried it before where, like, we'll read all of these and then have a negative on this to set the top speed to offset it, but if we end up putting a negative into this at all, it'll stop and require manual restart, so that's not so good. Um, let's turn this the wrong way for a second. And we're just going to do it like this. Um, and so our max speed target is going to be 100, and I think this ship will be able to handle that. What was its top speed? Like 130. Yeah, it, it probably can handle 100. Probably. Alright. Are you sure it was other humans? Probably. On orbit I have the spot where I hear rocket launch. I can't be sure which are correct and which selfies are wrong. We have to do them all over again. <laughs> We're not doing them all over again. How dare you. Alright, let's land on Quillian. And we're going to need to find... Well, we're going to need to find the... Mysterious structure, for starters. But more to the point, we're going to have to find a spot where we can not immediately have our ship be destroyed. Oh, here it is. Uh, we got some cozy cliffs here. Actually, that's looking extremely convenient. Anchor on Quillian. Go. And... We need some... We need some lasers. Ow. Oh, did I forget shields? I think I forgot shields. Let's just be a little bit careful here. Also, frog module, that's nice. Step outside to let the janitor do their job. Thank you, janitor. And I guess we're taking a screenshot with alien blood and guts all over this thing. It's fine. Uh, let's also put some shields in. 
Next we... I was going to say next we're going to Penium, but probably need to uh, refill our fuel. Let's go rescue our cartographer. I'm pretty sure I have spaceship wall on me. Yep, we're good. I have 22 selfies and I have to do them all over again? Oh no. Uh, speaking of which... Paste... Crop... Save as... William. And we're gonna double check that. William. And that's going in the Discord. Alright, so now we have... Not that we needed more than one, theoretically. Uh, now we have all the symbols representing... Wait, we got Marielle via Terraquillion. Uh, what happened to Lothar? Oh, I have it, I just didn't put it on the Discord yet. Lothar. Lothar. Alright, so we got Marielle, Viatella, uh, Viatera, Lothar, Quillian. And we're going to go get Penium after this. Uh, so we've got the symbols for a system that we have an anchor in. Presumably... My guess, actually, from something we saw at Foanestra, I'm guessing we actually need eight anchors somewhere to make this work. Uh, I'm kind of hoping that's wrong, to be honest. But if just having, regardless of where this is, like, pointed, we have one anchor and we've got one little light active here. Uh, it would seem to imply... It would seem to imply we need anchors all over the place. To make this work. Okay, uh, we're only 56 seconds out, cool. What else are we working on right now? We got our spiders here. Oh yeah, those are to upgrade the ship, but the ship is broken. Because I had to push our luck. What is this poor bot doing? trying to move some reality hypergraph data, but it has nowhere to put it. That's kind of a good problem to have. We still don't have teleportation data only because we don't have time space anomaly data in volume, which is only because we don't have cubes. Cubes are coming actually. Um, I'm guessing cubes are high priority to drop off over here. I've already got some. Yeah, very high priority. Uh, I could force a drop of cubes to this place. Oh wait, no, it's already... No, that's not what I meant. Um, the time-space anomaly data. I'm guessing is all getting brought over here. We've actually got some already, but we're missing singularity data. And I did drop the request for these down, so the next train of time space anomaly data should go down here, I think. Um, I just realized we're transporting Aquim processes around in circles here. Yeah, 
uh, we can drop the request for those. The train is bringing them, and then the bots are taking them back up here. Alright, so... Sushi go burr. And data go burr. Do you need more than one of the ring placed at different planets? Uh, of the ring, no, but I'm thinking anchors. We might actually need eight of them in various places, which... I'm hoping not. I don't really want to go to that much effort. Okay. And we are in motion. I could just get my player ship to go back on its own. Uh, what? Yeah, there we go. Bullet. This orbit. Also, I think I already upgraded the Naquium accumulators. Well, actually, now that we've got these, I'm curious. Um, can we actually go full speed ahead? I doubt it. Uh, why don't we aim for the nearest star? Vozanus. Or better yet, Boanestra, since that's the point of this. So my guess is that it didn't really have enough power to shoot down the asteroids. But now that the Naquim accumulators can keep up with the condenser turbine, um, it probably should be fine. The accumulators are going to take their sweet time. Uh, reaching maximum, though. Alright, I'm gonna turn off my RoboPort. And jetpacks go in here. So... My being here is not having any effect on whether this ship will... To be able to defend itself or not. Alright, cool. How's our Aquatite looking? Very, very good. Fantastic. Every single time I look at the antimatter stream here, it's empty. Which isn't surprising, though, because I think. The moment that we look here and find anything more than a little bit of antimatter stream uh, is the moment that we've completely caught up and it's basically saturating. That is not a good sign, though. Neither of the antimatter stream drop offs. Antimatter tanker number one. This is looking pretty full, actually. Yeah, I think even with this improvement here, we are significantly bottlenecked on literally just pumping it into the tanker and out. Um, I could maybe add some... Hmm. 
I could add some here. Why are the pumps only doing 1200? Because they've got to go through all this bottleneck. And this, this part here is pretty full, and this not so much. Oh. Uh, whoops. Where are our spiders right now? Let's improve that a little bit more, but also we're going to add another one. What's our speed? 94. I've still got, yeah, 99 spaceship walls. I think we'll be fine. Okay, then. I wonder how long until we get this data, though. Oh, it's coming. Uh, I think we need three more stacks per chest before a train comes for this. I kind of want to catch it happening and make sure the train is going here, to be honest. This is out the last thing we're waiting on. Um, oh, we're actually going to get four. Four teleportation data per time space anomaly data. And singularity data and so on. But still, yeah, we're going to get four train loads of this stuff. Um, the moment that that delivery happens. Um, and we're making, we're making our final catalogs here. Yeah, we're actually, uh, getting pretty close all of a sudden. Okay, but first we need to finish Deep Space Science Pack 4 research. Um, for that, we're waiting on... Say it with me, Naquitite. Tesseracts. Uh, nothing but Tesseracts, actually. Veldak, thank you very much for the gifted subs. 36 now, very much appreciated, thank you. Uh, Tug. Adam Marin. Night Dancer. Stargut. Uh, Fraser K, enjoy it. Thank you very, very much, Beldak. Um, so are we only waiting on Tesseracts? Tesseracts are getting consumed for... Uh, for processors, though. And it's like a hard priority because they have to... We have to accumulate 160 of them before they leave. I could set it up so that Danke Danke für das Geschenkabel Geschenkabel I hope I didn't just say something bad I'm sure it's fine Um, I could put something here so that we prioritize this. In fact, I could just swap which is provide a, uh, which is request a chest and which is uh, buffer chest. That might work. I think I want to leave the spiders here. I'll come back here myself. Or maybe I should grab one spider. I could get this guy to carry some chests. That was German. Ja, das ist jo uh, Deutsch. Mazel Fazel, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Wrong remote. Where's our scaffolding? Used to be scaffolding spiders. Thank you for the subscription. Yeah, I figured. 
indeed. Um, so yeah, we're just going to swap these to be requester chests. And these ones to be buffer chests. Uh, and that way we're going to prioritize not putting it to the train. Pronunciation was quite good. Did you learn the language? Yeah. Uh, I know that when I say Ich sprechen sehr kleine Deutsch, uh, I forget what exactly it sounds like, but it's, it's sort of like English. Um, it's like I'm saying I speak tiny German or something. Uh, the last word I remember learning was Das Bucherregal in primary school, which is a bookcase. Das, das Bucherregal. Well, it was the automated message text. Automated message text? Oh, right. I like learning languages, I should put more effort into it. Especially when you learn a word that's like... There's no... Direct translation for it, and it's kind of like you just learned a new word. Except then you can't use it because no one will recognize it. Alright, where are we? Speed is 125, and we still haven't crashed. Oh, are we actually just going to go to Foenestra at this rate? Uh, there's really no point in actually doing that, but... I mean, except for showing that we can. Asteroid density, it seems, is only 100 the entire way. I'm extremely bad with learning language, except programming languages. Special letter, like, with the umlaut? I, f I, I don't remember what that character is called. Seems to be hard, yeah. Lady of the Tree, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Alright, let's turn this thing around. Because I kind of want to be at novice orbit as well. If it can make it this far at top speed, it is likely safe. Likely. Umlaut is correct. Only good way of learning language is to be around a lot of it while learning it? Yeah. Have you started using Fornestra as a shortcut? No, I have not. That's what we're working on. Uh, solving the mystery of Bonestra. Chucky, good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Set of characters, everything with dots over it. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know the name of the specific character. If you don't make use of a language, you'll have a harder time. Oh, definitely. Improve my English a lot by watching streams like this every day. Yeah, that definitely helps. Absolutely. Uh, especially when... I mean, uh, here's a good example. Fantastic. It's you, You're going to have a much easier time picking up the word fantastic watching this stream than just trying to memorize it from a book or an app or something. Because it's not just, it's, it's not even just the repetitive use of it as well, it's the, uh, you, you remember the, the feel, the sound of it, the emotion of it, right? The context. I install all my applications in English version and use them that way. Oh yeah, that would help definitely.
Alright, uh, it's going to be a few minutes before we get back. So, what else have we got going on? I think this ship's been there forever because we're not using ships for Via Terra anymore. Should probably send it back to Nalvis Orbit or something and have it deconstructed. If I did want to go back to using spaceships for Via Terra. Wait, what? Oh, the logic is in the ship. Now that takes me back. Yeah, uh, if we're going to use ships again for our local planets, um, it's going to be antimatter ships anyway. Have you finished recipe lights for the sphere balancer? Yeah. Uh, I just added anything greater than zero and a red wire to these. So you can see it's only trying to do recipe six this instant. When it came to learning English, I at least had the benefit that my mother language and English share a lot of similarities. Oh, absolutely. There's a... Uh, I forget. There's another cluster of languages that are very similar, right? In Europe? Oh, what was I doing here? Oh, we've done it already. Request from buffer chests. And this is a buffer chest. Don't have to change anything there. Oh, so that prioritizes putting Macrium Tesseracts into the rail system. Nice. And I'll just change this back to what it was. Otherwise I'll forget. English mother tongue, though I grew up in Germany. Learning Swedish is now so much easier with that base. Swedish. In general, the Romantic and Slavic languages in Europe. I believe the language cluster t means is Scandinavia. Could be. Alright, so we still haven't crashed. That seems good. Uh, I guess we should get the input for this thing ready. Um, so... Right about here? Um, maybe we could put the stations down first. Questa. Questa. How did we do it over here? It was on the inside. That's a little bit surprising. But maybe we don't want to do that because we can use more room here. Something like this. Let's move this up a couple of tiles. It's actually pretty good. Uh, and we need to know where the pipes go. One tile down. Fantastic. Uh, I guess that would line up just like so, but not the best fit, perhaps. 
it's going to bottleneck through here if I try and bring it through multiple pumps this way anyway. Uh, I don't think we need to worry too much about the throughput for the thermo fluid though. Maybe I should design this one for the antimatter stream. I don't think the train part is the bottleneck we have to worry about. So this part will be fine, I guess. Australian is English with some Scotch swear words. That's that's making Australian English sound far too refined. Uh, no, I do want to. I do want to try and do slightly better than this. But we don't really have room. Yeah, I think I'll just not worry about it for this one. So, water input goes up here. Oh yeah, we need water. That, that's a thing. Uh, this will be water input. I'll connect this and we'll, we'll definitely know that that's the case. Uh, our main product is how many tiles down? Five. And I guess we could do water here. We need to do antimatter stream as well. Uh, I guess we'll do... Water here. Antimatter stream here. One, two, three, four, five. That's looking a bit off. Let's get rid of the old signals here. entities are not helping either. Alright, move these guys to the middle. Finnish shares a route with Estonian and Hungarian. That is pretty isolated. Uh, Lanarian, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. All right, so this is our product, and this is antimatter stream. And we'll need a gap there. Can I make that symmetrical? Oh, perfect. Beautiful. And then... Same thing over here. Except we don't need that. Alright, antimatter stream drop off. Uh, 
Whoops. Two, three. And then... Uh, and then we need to pump antimatter in up here. Okay. Uh, why don't we bring it through... Actually, it's going to be down this way for these two. So... I think I would also have antimatter drop-off on that side. So I think I'll just... Maybe like this, actually. Seven tiles. One off. I'm pretty sure this isn't going to reach if I do this. Yep, it's literally one off. No. Let's put a 3B. Right, where are we now? Oh, we've arrived. Oh. Oh, we've arrived. Um. Uh. Ha ha. Ha ha ha. What ID did I set this to? It got copied. Okay. We were going to do it based on negative 275 degree thermofluid, but actually we're going to do. 25. So fluid ID 26. That's going to be taken. I never actually did figure out what ID to give this. Um, but suffice to say... Um... I don't know. Let's go negative 273. I'm sure we'll end up needing that. And then here as well. Also, we need to change this. And then watch. I'm amazed. I bought 100 grams of bacon two days ago. It was six slices different store. It was 17 very thin slices. Okay. We didn't get any liquid rocket fuel over here. Did we get any antimatter stream here? We actually didn't. It didn't manage to contaminate. That's cool. Alright, so now we need water drop off. Uh... I was going to say we need water drop-off up here, which is true, but maybe maybe we just use the one station. I mean, I could have pipes go up here instead. Maybe that would look cleaner. Then again, we, do, we could do with fewer LTN stations, I suppose. Uh, if we do it like this... What length would be good here? Five... And that's got to be max length. Alright, so connect to the logistic train stop output. It's kind of hard to see. Whichever fluid the train is trying to offload, we'll get a negative one signal. So, antimatter stream. And 
water. Oh. I am still injured. Alright, so water goes in here. Uh, Antimatter stream goes in here. 25 degree thermo fluid goes in here. And I'm actually going to set it to a high priority request. Not that there's ever a shortage. Uh, 25 degree thermo fluid. Uh, we can actually set that slightly above 200k. Oh, and station name. Real quick. There we go. Don't forget to tell LTN what the station has. Same goes for you. And we are requesting... Oh, did I turn this on? Yeah, I did. Uh, we are requesting... Water. And... Antimatter stream. Thermo fluid is on its way. And I need to take some hypercoolers. I'll actually steal them from here. Uh, let's see. Hypercoolers. And thermal radiators. I would imagine one stack of each will be plenty. This is actually two stacks. I'm thinking I could copy this and we'll use the efficient recipe. The slow one that wastes the minimum of thermofluid. So then we have to make this trip as little as possible. Uh, so give me another stack of that, actually. And who knows... Maybe we'll even need more than tw uh, more than 15 hypercoolers, although I doubt that. This over-the-top block uses 16 each, although that's with uh, speed modules and um, cryonite. We'll see. Alright, so where's our fluid? It is arriving. Uh, we've already got water and antimatter stream, so I'm not as concerned, except that this should already be on its way. A hundred K. Negative 180k. Is switched on. At the very least, I would expect water to have no trouble getting here. Um, where are we getting our water from? Oh, I remember. The barrels. Did... Did the barrels stop? Uh-oh. No, there's water here. Yeah, no, it's just ice. We don't even need barrels for the water. Okay, there's water. Even if this is busted. It's fine. Alright, so we'll give this some time to fill up. Um, we'll put some logic here already. Although I won't be leaving it switched on. Uh, let's 
let's see. If 25 degree thermofluid is greater than 24,000 and something or other. How fast two antimatter engine ships are going? Like this one? Uh, this one's top speed was like 130 or something. Uh, we're going to output spaceship launch. I'm going to leave that on input count, which is zero, until I'm ready to fully automate it. And we're going to put my robot port back on. It is back on. Uh, we're going to transmit on the red wire up to the spaceship console. Does this connect? Not quite. Uh, about this. No. I can't actually... Oh, yes, I can. Alright. So, our destination is Anomaly 1. I wonder what would happen if I get on my ship and just put in Anomaly 2 as the destination. Okay. Um, I might just rework that wire a little bit. So destination is Bo and Estra. Actually, what happens if we do Anomaly 2? Yeah, I figured. Estimated range of four antimatter tanks for this one? Thinking about upgrading my ion plate. Oh, th uh, the booster tanks? Very, very, very far. Like, really far. Um, well, let's have a look. Uh, it's a different sized ship, but Stardust 7, which is... I don't want to say it's nearly halfway back to Nalvis Orbit, because there's a bunch of distance that's, like, hidden in the star here from the map view. But let's say it's like, let's say it's 60 or 70% done on its round trip, including taking off from Nalvis, uh, with eight tanks, we're down to 37k each, so uh, 13,000 times eight. Uh, so that's actually 104,000 antimatter stream, approximately. However, this is a ship with 1,866 container stress. Yeah, it's real good. Alright, uh, why don't we go on our last little joyride in... Uh, this system to get uh, to get the glyph image from Pennion and then we'll come back we'll have a decent amount of thermofluid here or at least I thought we would have a decent amount of thermofluid here oh there's still quite a lot here actually wait is this pumping this is not pumping <laughs> okay that would probably help. Yeah, that that would probably help. Um, and then we drain this faster, therefore the train comes sooner, therefore we pump this faster, and so on. Uh, 
uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go for a little ride in this ship. Um, I'll give you a demonstration of just how fuel efficient it is. This one's hull stress 540. Uh, we've got four tanks, so 100, uh, 200k antimatter stream. Plus 200. Hey, research is done. Fantastic. Uh, that means we can finally, finally, finally set the recipe on our very last science pack. Don't you have upper thermofluid inputs to on that new ship? Uh, what do you mean by upper thermofluid inputs? Do you mean like colder thermofluid? I'm taking 25 degree thermofluid because um, we can turn it into any temperature. Like you can pump in at four places. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Oh yeah, good call, thank you. Alright, but we need to... We do need to actually get it coming out from different spots here. I think, actually, we have room for the scaffolding. Why don't we do it? Yeah, we have more room than I gave this credit for. And I might do something. Similar over here. Alright, so... Yeah, we've got just enough room to make this work, I think. Actually, the pump will have to be vertical. I suppose that's fine. And a five, and not a five. Rip. Uh, I think instead of the five over here, just for the sake of symmetry, we'll go for the undergrounds. Well, that's a three. Good catch, thank you, uh, Kate, Kate, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Alright, so now we're pumping in at a rate of like 4,000. Well, that's actually going to be fairly full by the time we get back, I think. Uh, let's jump in our ship. Uh, 200k plus 200 antimatter stream. Uh, hull stress 539.5. We're going to Pelion, which is. Uh, does it say the Delta V somewhere? I don't know. But we're going from here to here. It is a 9.5k radius planet, 9,491 to be precise. Uh, and almost all of the fuel consumption is going to be from taking off from this planet. I think we'll get there with this thing saying 49k, um, although I'm not sure exactly how empty this is going to be. Uh, my trim, if I didn't say so. Well, I'm not you're doing well. Alright, so science, though. Kind of glossed over the fact that we've got tier 4 science. We will be needing extended deep space catalogue, which is the only thing that we haven't got yet. Teleportation data is still waiting on time-space anomaly data. Time space anomaly data never quite got to. That's weird. Why is that imbalanced? 
these two should have exactly the same amount in them. It's very weird. Well, as long as each cargo wagon gets the same amount. Not overly concerned by that. Uh, it looks like our cubes are coming. So this is probably the last burst that this thing needs. And then we'll be getting, uh, I think, probably like four train loads of extended deep space catalog. Yeah, I don't... Oh, I did set the provide stack threshold here very low. But I don't think we need to do that. We'll leave it there until we get our first bit of science, why not? So, extended deep is going to go here. And we're also waiting on some deep space science pack 3s, so more Naquim Tesseracts. But that's fine. What else can we research right now? Uh, where is the science block? Here it is. We've got... 292 tier 3 packs and effectively more than 2.2k of the other two. So as long as we're not doing pack 3 we can probably research whatever we like. Oh. Oh that's Deep Space Science pack 4. Teleportation. Nothing on its own, but it's a gateway. Okay. Oh yeah, Arculink storage. So 5,000 plus 10,000. Good grief. Uh, That's kind of expensive, though. It's kind of really expensive, though. I mean, what do you expect, right? We could easily upgrade laser damage. Uh, which might make our endgame ship just that bit easier. Uh, I don't think we're going for mining productivity 12. 22,000 deep space science packs 3s, no. Not doing that unless I was... Unless I was going to go for, like, a... The goal was not to finish SE, but, like, a specific SPM. Oh, we can do character crafting speed and health. I don't really care about those, to be honest. Uh, well, uh, what about stuff that's... There's literally nothing left, really. The only thing that's really interesting that we can't unlock directly um, is the Arcolink storage. Uh, we need 10,000 Deep Space Science Pack 4s to unlock Spaceship Victory. Yeah, we're kind of just waiting on more Nacrotite, as always. Just how early in the game... We need tier 4 astro and material science pack. I wonder if it would be... Like, I wonder if if we were going for some kind of speed run or something. Or just trying to do this faster. Uh, it would be a good idea to try and rush these two relatively. So that we can start mining Naquatite early. Before we get around to spending all of it. I'm seeing cubes being made very, very often now. Although it could be a little bit of a coincidence. Uh, yeah, no, it's looking decent. It's definitely better consistently than we've had in the past. Alright, where are we? 55 seconds away. 
we are here. And we have consumed... Uh, if you just moused over this, you would think we had consumed zero antimatter stream. We're at 49,600 in this tank. And it was something like 49,750 or something. Right after we embarked. Uh, how about our antimatter stream canister, uh, canisters? How's that going? Where's our ship? Canestra resupply. Still has some canisters here. Has no ice. Shouldn't that mean it's taking off? There's no power. Oh, good grief. Uh, everything's crashed. Maybe... Hmm. I probably... Should have connected it so that... This thing can share power with this thing. In the event that something like this happens. What did we run out of here? We've got... I was going to say we've got water, but... Uh, these do have water in them, even though we don't see any in the tanks. Water output here is blocked. Water output here is blocked. Because there's no power for the pumps. Hmm... Maybe it's not such a crazy idea to have, like, an energy beam receiver and instead of a 5,000 degree, just like a single r uh, normal heat exchanger and a condenser turbine, um, just so that we produce the power that we need to kickstart this thing. I should also definitely put a power switch so that if we're running out... Um... Okay, what the hell? We've got 25,000 degrees steam. Hmm. I mean 25,000 5k steam. It's the pumps. The pumps are the problem here. The energy receiver might be a good idea just in case, yeah. Uh, so I want a power switch to disconnect if... I don't know. Because we've got all this steam here... I guess we could just read from an accumulator. Yeah, if the accumulator goes down, then there's some kind of problem. So we probably just connect this only if the accumulator is full. And then we have a beam receiver, just a regular heat exchanger, a single condenser turbine, and it that'll generate way more than enough power to just run the inserters and stuff like that, and the pumps and things. Would you be able to heat up the energy receiver with heat from the reactors? Uh, yes. Yes, I would. However... Oh, wait a sec. Wait, wait, wait. If we assume that there's always going to be heat here, which there is... Yeah, 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 this is actually really good. Um, okay, so let's say... Let's say we run out of antimatter fuel, for example. Uh, like, let's imagine one of the worst cases. Uh, this heat is only going to drop down to 5k. It doesn't dissipate beyond that. It, it has to get consumed. So there's always going to be enough heat to just run a heat exchanger off of it directly. 
we don't even need the energy, uh, the beam receiver. I mean, we could add one and, like, have it receive ever so little heat, but it's not really needed. Um, we could turn this into an underground... Uh, underground pipe. Put our heat exchanger somewhere like this. It really wouldn't take much. Um, I don't know if the heat exchanger can suck water out from here to here, but it shouldn't really need to, like, normally. Also... Hmm. The fact that we've got all this steam... It can't be used because the water output's blocked, because the pumps aren't running, because there's no power, because the steam isn't being consumed. Uh... It's kind of weird. We could even just... We could even just output 500 degrees steam. Wait, 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 wait. This thing can actually use... Oh no, the, if, the, if the steam's too hot it won't work. Never mind. Uh, we could just do a condenser turbine here that outputs directly to the water with no pumps. Yeah, uh, I think that's actually all it would take. And we would have to be out of steam here for that not to kick in. Have a path for the water from one section that has no pumps. It's a little tricky. Uh, we could have... That's actually not so tricky. Yeah, if we just route it around here. Except then it could, theoretically, it could flow back this way. Except I don't think it would do that. It'd be nice if we could have a one-way flow that doesn't require power. I mean, that's what a condenser turbine would be, actually. Yeah. Except it has to turn from 500 degrees steam into water. But that's fine. Yeah, there's a number of ways we could go about this. Uh, we could even be a bit redundant and do, like, both. So we have, like, a... Like, steal this heat, pump it into a turbine, but also the turbine can take this steam. I don't know. There are ways. Uh, Alright, so we are at Pentium. Now, we've used like 250 or so, about a thousand, give or take, antimatter stream in total to get here. And... I think we'll land over here. Roboport is in the way. Oh, yes it is. Roboport is in the way? What? Okay. Alright. And we're going over here. Let's check our gear. I might just keep the jetpacks on and swap these out for lasers.
All right, that's enough of that. I'm gonna have to wait for them if I try to keep my if if I try to keep the exit clear. All right, that'll do. I guess it doesn't really matter. And back we go. All right, so nine, just under nine thousand five hundred radius planet. How much fuel do you think it's going to take to get this thing in orbit again? We're going to find out. Uh, let's go to now this orbit. And we go from, what was it, 49,750 to 40,417 in each tank. Uh, that is quite a bit. So getting to Penium was almost nothing compared to our maximum, and taking off was like a fifth of our fuel supply. Alright, uh, maybe we should just go straight to Foenestra, actually. There's nothing we need to personally get back for, is there? I don't think so. Foenestra needs help. Okay. So we're going to build a few redundancies into this thing that would kickstart it again. We're going to have a power switch so that we shut off power to the gate whenever accumulator charge on this side is less than 100%. We're going to have power from the ship connected. We're going to have uh, maybe steal the heat from this. Especially if we can find a super convenient place to put that. But it's looking a little tricky. Unless I move this thing around. If I move it back a tile, the inserter still works. And I could move this thing a little bit. And we could do an underground pipe like this for water. Oh, there's there's water right here. If I move the RoboPort, I can literally just put that there. But then this is where we end up having no water. But that probably won't happen. The heat exchanger contains 200 water. It only takes two seconds to consume that, theoretically. Or, like, three seconds-ish. Oh. Oh, we still have all these Naquium processors here. Good grief. Uh, remind me to get rid of those. Send them back to the mall when we get back. That's like two. S that that's more than two supercomputers worth of Naquium processors just sitting here. That's a little bit of a waste. Yeah, so we are going to put in a pylon right about here. It's going to connect power from this ship to. All of this. We're going to actually get rid of those. We're going to switch off power to the ring if accumulated charge drops. We're going to have a condenser turbine 
that's going to output water directly up here. Uh, from this steam here, I guess. And that can access the steam all the way along here. So I don't think that's about to run out. 15k? Really? There's 15,000 steam at 500 degrees available here and in the outputs from these high temp turbine generators. That is not a small amount. That's most of a storage tank. I don't think we need to go as far as adding like a heat exchanger somewhere. Yeah, so that's three, that's three redundancies, three checks. I think that'll be good. All right. So what are we researching? Um, I would love to get Spaceship Victory. It's 10,000 Deep Space Fours, though. What are we missing? Naquin Tesseract. Uh, we are making those catalogs, though. Very, very good. Products finished. 28. Oh, this also needs Naquim cubes. Yeah, that's going to be slow. I'll, I'll leave this as just looking for four stacks for a delivery. Well. I guess I'll set this thing to request... 10,000. Well, more like 5,000 Deep Space Science Pack 4s is what we actually need to get this done. Okay. Still... Oh, the ETA goes all over the place. I forgot about that. So I have no idea how close we are to Foenestra. I mean, I have a pretty good idea. It's not a terribly long journey. But still. I can't believe we're still bottlenecked on the antimatter. Uh, I see a bunch of it in the tanks here, so... Maybe we're not? Question mark? Maybe a bunch of ships are just arriving now? Oh yeah, we were going to do antimatter stream here. Let's make that happen, shall we? Uh, so it was this shape. I think we already did that. Yeah, cool. Alright, let's start with... Uh, this? What is happening here? Oh. Oh no. Well, you can stay there for a while. And I guess you can as well. I might move them on over here. Um, I think I just want to copy-paste all of this, actually. Except for the solid rocket fuel. 
Yeah, that's actually super easy. Uh, where are our antimatter tankers right now? This one's waiting its turn to anchor at Nervous. Why do we not have an uh, clamp here? Uh, okay. I guess we gotta go back for that as well. Alright, let's send you back to the mall. Make sure the lagging spiders don't walk in the wrong spot. Um, copy this part. And this part. And the station name... Don't tell me. I never actually updated the name here. Uh, did we build this part? Yeah. Alright, let's move you back here. And you over here. And that should get them to drop off the antimatter stream at this station. In fact, I'll update this station name while I have the chance. And we'll update this one as soon as we're done here. Also, no five seconds. Just move on as soon as you've touched that spot. That's a quick empty. I mean, I, I guess it literally doesn't get any quicker than this. Where are you going with that? No. Could you... There we go. Good. Alright, we are at Foenestra. Uh, let's anchor over here, I suppose. Connect this wire. And our power plant lives again. Fantastic. You can have three pumps per wagon, precisely. And that's redundancy number two. And redundancy number three. Um, I'll just bring this back here first. And I don't know if I carry power switches anymore. I haven't used them in a while. Oh, wait, there's one. There's a whole stack, as a matter of fact. And accumulator. Okay. Uh, very simple. I'm just going to say A equals 100. And I can still pick a dollies this way if I want to manually decide not to use the power. Also, if you can, even in vanilla, you can remotely change, uh, turn a manual power switch on and off uh, at a distance. Okay. 
Oh, right. Let's do this. It's a bit cleaner looking. A bit easier to read. Maybe like this? Nope, that's terrible. Okay. Right then. Uh, so that's Foenestra working again with three things in place that should keep it from breaking again. Uh, next we need to bring our thermo fluid. Although I guess how many bots are here? Oh, there we go. Uh, I guess I could just go ahead and design. need more scaffolding. I could just go ahead and design some stuff here. I need to bring a construction ship. Alright, this thing can go back to Nalvis Orbit, actually. Um, and I will mark these chests for deconstruction. Uh, and that'll get sorted out when it gets there. Um, I think we have a construction ship that is... Yeah. Looking for antimatter stuff. Antimatter reactor stuff. I don't think we're going to be doing that again, so that's fine. No need to hold on to keep asking for that. Alright. So you're coming back to Foenestra, bring me lots of scaffolding, and uh, we'll build the thermofluid system up here. Power consumption is going to be pretty much irrelevant, except for the ring. Like, everything else is going to be... A joke, by comparison. Although every bit of power we do consume is burning antimatter to make it happen. Um, but I think we'll go for the efficient cooling recipe that loses us less than... A f well, it loses us exactly one-fifth of one percent of the thermofluid whenever it cycles. Um, I guess we'll use a beacon. I don't want to put it under power just yet. Oh, I'll just steal from myself here. Something like this. Except... I don't think we're going to need the pumps since we're not going to go full speed ahead. Those are tier 3 efficiencies. Probably 8, because there's only 2 modules in these things. I have no idea what kind of rate we're going to need here. Hopefully we can do it all with one block easily. Okay. Uh, we could even go a little bit further. And we could do that even more, actually. Uh, this one. Is 
So we could do as many as 96 of these under one beacon. Why are wires like this? Oh my goodness. I, no, I do not want to connect Foenestra right now. The ring, that is. Uh, let's just see what the power consumption is like. Minus 80%. Plus 100%. Okay. Got it right the first time. And our rate here would be... Uh, 4.9k per second, cold thermofluid. If we need that much, well, maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't be shocked if we need that much to support Foenestra. So, I mean, we need 10 gigawatts to run the thing. So, we'll see. Where is that construction ship? That's not the one I'm looking for. I should probably check on the ones I've forgotten about, though. Wait, what? Huh? Did I forget about this one? Where is it going? Destination Nalvis Orbit. Uh, it's in... Deep Space. It has fuel. It has water. Oh, and it would have heat, except for some reason it didn't put fuel in? Yeah, I totally forgot about this. And I have no idea... I don't think there's a way to fix it remotely. Hmm. If I could somehow take this 8 kilowatts of power and put it all into this inserter. Um, if I got a bot to deconstruct this, which bots shouldn't work right now. Do we have any little mini power pole things? We do not. How come the solar panels don't work? They do, they're just at only 8 kilowatts each, and the power network is the entire ship. You know, this wouldn't have happened if I put some fuel, some regular fuel in here, and used a burner inserter. Yeah, we actually could use burner inserters to input uranium fuel cells into these things. That might actually be smart. You can shift click to remove wires remotely. Uh, yeah, but we've got like a substation up here that covers everything and I don't have a way to like to manage the connections here. Uh, anyway, before we get too distracted. Uh... Our ship is on its way. Good. And I just remembered the travel time is like... Oh. Wait, this travel time is actually showing... Okay, never mind. I guess we can count on this ETA. Alright. Well, I'm gonna have to fly over to construction ship number four to rescue it. Um, but that is just about going to do it for today. Let's see who is streaming Factorio. Thanks, Fatboy. Chucky, thanks for hanging out. El Pancho. Uh... Haven't raided into Tooth in a minute. Factorio, random recipe. Random recipes? Alright, I'm curious. Ben Wu, Sheep Say Met. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, 
Okay. Silent Stone, take care. Thank you all for watching. Do take care, and I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord of the Blueprints if you're interested. Uh, if you have any questions about them, don't hesitate. And stay safe. Take care, guys. Sound is hex. How are you doing?